So every Thursday night, 9 p.m. Tonight I have a couple of regulars, um, co-hosts, which is Raymondo from the, from the northeast. Say hello, Ray. Hello. How are you doing? Now, Ray's, Ray's on his phone tonight. He's been kicked out of his house, but that's for another day. <laughs> um, and, and next we have Andy, who's um, done a few miles this week. Andy, thanks for joining us. I know you're knackered. No problem, mate. If I fall asleep halfway through, just give me a nod. Yeah, well, no worries. I don't fall asleep when you're talking anyway, so vice versa. <laughs> so, okay, let's go on to the first subject, guys. Let's get straight into it. So, obviously, Tim Tazoo's been quite a little bit mouthy about who he wants to fight after that average showing in Australia last week. Um which I know you two saw on a replay, but I watched it live. Don't ask me how I did that, but I did. So, um, yeah. So, I'll give my thoughts first, guys. I think Tazoo's in deep, deep water with Liam Smith. He wasn't great in that last performance. Um, the kid jumped up a couple of weights and landed on Tazoo at will. Anyone with a bit more power would have gave him serious trouble that night. Um, he looked through his resume... There's nothing to write home about. He, you know, he beat Jeff Orme and Jeff Orme was spent to use Smith's record um, words. So I think as long as they pay the money to get Smith over there, I think it's an easy night's work for Liam Smith. I really do. Um, so that's my thoughts. I think it's a convincing points win for Smith, if not a late stoppage. Um, Andy, what do you reckon? <laughs> Um, why the hell is, is, well, is Liam Smith even, even entertaining this fight? Yep, so Liam Smith's been on social media saying as long as you pay him the pound notes, he's more than happy to go over. Um, and to use his words, and uh, he's happy to go over and see what this kid's all about. Well, he's not all about much, is he? So, I, I, I don't understand this part, this, this point in his career. This just, this just, it's just another, another point to add to the, the lack of backing he's had from from uh, Matchroom. He shouldn't, he, sh he shouldn't be entertaining fights like this. His way, his, his levels, levels and levels above this kid. Just because it, just because his old man was a great fighter, don't make him a great fighter. He might be in the future, but right now he's fought nobody and he's only fought him in Australia. I, I just... <clears throat> he's got I tell you what, he's got some he's got some cojones and to to to, to think he can call out Liam Smith and people not laugh at him it is staggering for me. How the commentators didn't go you can't be serious. I just I don't I don't get it. I, it's a pointless fight. Liam Smith will just take <coughs> it. I mean, looking at looking at Tim Tazoo's resume, he, he, he could argue his best win would be in Dennis Hogan. You know, who's nowhere near in Liam Smith's league. And the kid that he fought the other day, Stephen Sparks, you know, all credit for him for jump, jumping in. But he's, he could what, this kid, what this kid's trying to do is he's, try, he's trying his luck into mm -hmm. He's thinking, maybe Liam Smith's coming to the end of his career. Maybe I'm getting him at a good time. He clearly didn't watch the last fight because although it goes down as a loss, Smith didn't lose that fight. And he should be world champion. And he had plenty left in the tank. Yeah. <laughs> He's not spent at all. Um and if you look at if if you look at his his, his record recently, he's not had that many fights, has he? You know, it's it's not like he's he's been out three and four times a year. Crazy! It's crazy that this kid. I mean, I'm, I'm surprised his old man's allowing it. His, his old man should know better than this. Yeah, his old man's in Russia at the minute doing some work, doing some promotional work in Russia, whatever that might mean. Well, even so, even so, mate, surely he's got to be in his ear, and he's got to be saying, "This is way too too soon for you, son." Crazy! It's just crazy. Ray, when are people going to give Liam Smith the credit he deserves? I mean, he's only lost to Canelo, uh, Munguia, and this Russian kid, which you all know, Liam Swift won that fight. Yeah, yeah. Pro problem, pro problem I've got is um, th this guy, he's not... 
his opponent should have been somebody Cal Brook only struggled with because he had his best mate in the corner at the time because he had fallen out with Brendan Ingle. And then he's got this last minute replacement and then he, and he looked shocking. I don't even think it was a, a case of a lack of motion, motivation to get up for that fight. He got hit at will, uh, especially, in, especially in that second round. He was, he was, it, was, it was just disgusting. I just think that because Liam Smith's overrated, I'm uh, sorry, underrated, you are going to get a lot of uh, these type of fighters calling them out rather than rather than the better fighters in the weight class who just seem as too much too much risk for too little reward. That's it. Liam Smith is the n- number one in the in the who needs me club. He's just always been there throughout his career and he's just sat there unfortunately. We can talk all day about how Eddie Hearn should get him out and, and do this, but Liam Smith's got no choice but to take these opportunities. He said on his social media for the past 17, 18 months, he's had barely nothing, nothing on the table. Apart from, and then now all of a sudden he's getting opportunities because he's lost. So people are starting to think he's not as good as w- w- what he was. So it could work out better for Liam Smith. I see Liam Smith doing a job quicker than what Carl just said uh, over over in Australia. I think he he stopped some mid rounds. The only, the only people that could, you know, I mean this that Russian he was tough. Let's be honest, he was tough. But he took the fight to Canelo, and how many people have? We can count on one hand how many people have done that on the inside against Canelo. Uh, exactly. So, so I think with his strength, his his um, you know, his his head movement, his ability, his his body shots, his ability to pick his shots on the inside. I think it'd just be too too strong, too powerful for, uh, for Tim, and I can and, just see him stopping him in the mid, mid rounds. And I, mean, I think that. Sorry, Ray. Uh, what they're making a big deal about Tazu being a big body puncher, aren't they? That's what he's dining out on at the minute. Well, I'd argue Smith's got a better body shot than than Tazu. You know, you do. Tazu's going to find out, isn't he? Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah it's 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 all right. It's all right. Like it's all right. It's all right being a good body puncher against. Um, I wouldn't even call him gatekeepers. He's been fighting against. They're pretty much being journeymen. Lee Smith's a good body puncher at a very good level. He's yeah. a world class body puncher. There's a le- there's difference. We're talking about levels here. I just I can't see how this kid gets past Liam Smith, and this is the win he may need to propel him back. So everyone starts taking him seriously. Yeah, yeah. Just a little quick hello to our to our friend Silvio. I'm Hi, guessing Silvio. Uh, I'm guessing you're at work, Silvio. Um, if not, mate, jump on. And th- just to say, uh, just to say, Andy struggles with English. Never mind complimenting him on his Spanish, Silvio. So, um, <laughs> That's very true. To be fair. It's it's about the only word I know, Silvio, and that's the, and then and you know that because I heard it in a film. <laughs> so, I think the next one we we should cover, which is a bit of a strange one, guys, and uh, I know we got a bit, few people joining us. Um, I think we better touch on Mr. Fiore and the and the circus that is surrounding Tyson at the minute. So, um, Ray, I'm going to let you have a first go on this one. What the hell do you think's going off here? It's very frustrating, and it, it, he's he's covering himself in a, a very bad light. I just think the whole rhetoric of the situation is feeding this um, the anti fury. Always, oh, he's, he's a cheat. He's um, the whole glove gate scandal from all the Wilder fans in America, and Wilder's just making himself look absolutely. Um, Fury's just making himself look absolutely abysmal in this. He clearly he doesn't have COVID. So it points out to why the fight was cancelled. Was it was it because they weren't selling enough tickets? He doesn't look. He doesn't look as though he's got an injury. Um, is it being being issues with his mental health, which could be a possibility. But either way, the way he's gone about it, um, it 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 just it just puts him in such a bad light. It's difficult to defend him. And this is what I've always said about Tyson Fury: his ability is second to none, but. Again, you've got to question his mindset. I mean, this is somebody that's never defended the title. So if you're gonna call yourself number one heavyweight, questions gotta be asked because he did he didn't get he didn't take the, the rematch with Vladimir Kitschko. And there's an argument to say he, he's not taking his third fight. Then there's a whole issues with the with the Joshua fights. You can't tell me he didn't know that the arbitration was, was happening and it was looking very, very likely he was gonna be forced to fight Deont- Deontay Wilder. 
he was coming off the phone saying, "I've just been just come off the phone to um, one of the one of the sheikhs and one of the, one of the princes in Saudi Arabia." He's just leaving himself wide open for ridicule, Tyson Fury. Yeah, yeah. So we're talking about an October fight now, aren't they, allegedly? Yeah. You know, yeah. October the 9th, isn't it? Yep. Yeah. yeah. Andy, what do you reckon? Um, I d I'm struggling with it, mate, if I'm honest. I'm struggling to understand it. I, I can hear exactly what Ray's mm. saying. And I, I don't want to believe that. Even though it makes sense, Ray, I don't want to believe it because I don't want to. I don't want to think that Fury's potentially struggling again. I think personally, I think he spent too much time in America. He should have. He should have come back, got himself back at home with his kids, his wife, and his family. They're probably over there with him, but it's not the same. It's like an holiday, isn't it? He's in the sun. He's going out to the beach. He's doing whatever he's doing. That's not getting his mind focused on the game. He needs to be back in the cold weather of England in the rain, running running down the beaches in 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 the cold Sunday weather. Morecambe. Yeah. In Morecambe. Yeah. Sunny Morecambe. There's a plug for Morecambe Toys Information Board. Be, be, because that that's clear, clearly where he's at his best. Because then he's got his old man as well, who who focuses him. Everyone, everyone has a lot of a lot of things to say about John Fury, but he knows how to he knows how to focus Tyson. So it how it is, how it is for me, Ander. That's what John. Yeah, and Tyson and Tyson listens to it. The problem is, he, 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 his old man's not allowed in America, is he? Yeah, no. So, so, so for that reason, he's not got that guiding light that he normally has over here. So for me, that it's probably got a bit to do with that as well. I'm wondering whether he, he just can't get motivated for it. He knows he beats what Wild Reezer. Is is it? Is then he needs to prove it. He needs right? to prove it, Andy. He needs to prove it. He don't need to prove it though, because he's proved it twice. Yeah, but but what you've got to remember is, he's he's starting to, he's starting to get a reputation. This is this is what I'm saying. So it's it's all well and good saying. He's beaten him. He's beaten him twice, which we know he, he, he sh the first fight he should have won. But when you've been mandated, when you've been forced, and he, and he doesn't, he's got no option but to fight. Otherwise, he gets stripped. Uh, and what's uh, I going to say? What's I going to say about his legacy? That's what you got to uh, think of now with Tyson Fury. It's about uh, legacy. Yeah, I think one problem, one problem is Ray that he's surrounding himself by yes man, and that's what John Fury says. You that's know? kind of yeah, kind of goes back a little bit to what I was saying about John Fury, don't it? Yep. So, um, yeah, I, I worry. I mean, I'm, we're we're all big Tyson Fury fans, um, but you know, after that court run, he, he knew he had to face him. He mm. knew he had to face him. Yeah. So you, yeah. you know, and then surely you look at the bigger picture, don't you? So you go. You, you, the, the, my concern is. That like Tyson Fury is starting to be a bit of an entertainer, and his press conferences are almost better than his, his fighting, his fights. He's taking he's taking a leaf out of uh, McGregor's book, isn't it? Yeah, but he, he he said that's what he does. He says he hates press conferences, so to get himself motivated to do a press conference, he puts on the act. That's just that's just what he that's does. Swim into that if that's how he gets through day, it. He's got to do it in the ring, and so far he's come up trumps. But this is a dangerous fight for him. He just can't take his eye off the ball. If he's not motivated, he better. There's no excuses to defend his WBC title. Wasn't and, this? And, 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 and if he if he wins this, he's got the, he's got the, he's got an eye on the undisputed fight. Yeah, but the problem is, Ray. Now this has been pushed back to October. <coughs> to me, that undisputed fight never happens no, because never. come come the start of next year, Joshua's either going to start getting stripped or he's going to end up having to fight mandatories again in yeah. that round robin situation. Is it? It's left. It's left Joshua in, in an impossible position. Whether Fury means to do it or not, I don't know. Whether they just want to just trying to stick one on Match Room and Joshua, just playing with them, I don't know. But but it Fury's going to look back in twenty and thirty or thirty years time because 
he's quite a good scholar when it comes to to boxing history. He talk he talks about the the old days and the old fighters and the the, the lineal uh, championship. You know, beat the man that beat the man yeah. and all that. Yeah. But when he looks back in twenty or thirty years time, or when the public look back in twenty or thirty years time, he won't go down as a great. That's that's the point I was making. Because he's not beat every, he's not beat everyone in his era. The next best person in his era is not going to face, or if he does, it isn't going to be from disputed. And that would have made his legacy. He could have walked away from boxing if it if it, if it had took that Joshua fight. M one, yeah, but he can't do that in a minute. And if he walks away now, people will be like, "Well, he walked away from a Klitschko rematch, and then he walked away from a third fight with Deontay Wilder." And what they'll say, what they'll say is. The, the, like I'm saying, the, it'll strengthen the argument they put them towards saying, oh, he cheated, he did this, he did that. I'm expecting, th this is how it should have planned out for me. July 24th, Fury does a job on Deontay Wilder over 12 rounds, humiliates him and puts the bed all that argument. And eventually it sets up e either a chance at um, the undisputed with Joshua or they those bells break up. That could have happened. Or, 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 or he gets a, he get, get a fight, say Joshua vacates one of them and still gets a fight with Joshua. It may not necessarily be for all four belts, but just that fight with Joshua and then he walks away. If that fight would have happened at its scheduled date, then then the Joshua fight could have happened before Christmas. Because they were talking December, weren't they? Well, I don't know, because he, he's got a fight with Usyk in September. Is that right? Yeah, no, three months. Yeah, I'd, as I'd long as he comes out of that un unscathed. <clears throat> no, I, I, I think that would have been too quick to turn around. I think probably early next year. I think there would. I think it would have been a summer fight at when you know a summer fight or, or yeah, 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 something like that. I think I think having that fight in the summer would have Joshua wouldn't have allowed that. Joshua wouldn't no. have wanted that. Too quick to turn around. Question no. is though. Question is if um, if Fury walks away, yeah, doesn't take this fight and gets stripped, because that's what'll happen. Yeah, I mean, from from my understanding, when this arbitration ruling was made, there was a date they had to fight by. Fifteenth of September. Right. So so the reason, quite clearly, then the reason that all this COVID nonsense has come out. <coughs> Is so there's a reason why it can get postponed and he doesn't get stripped. Because if you think about it, when Tyson Fury and um, Bob Arum said, oh, the deadline for Wilder to exercise the rematch has passed, Wilder turned around and said, well, it was COVID. I couldn't yeah. exercise the rematch clause. So what Tyson Fury is doing is using the same <laughs> excuse back to Deontay Wilder. When essentially, you know... We, I mean, the thing, the thing you, you know yourself, you can put in a positive test and have no symptoms. Yeah. I mean, he could have done that. And because he's got no symptoms, he looks like he's okay. But he but should he have just... been walking around though, should have. Yeah, that's the thing. And this is what I'm saying. He's leaving himself wide open. Yeah, he's not, he's not leaving himself in very good light. I mean, the other, the other way to look at it is all this time that he's been out in America for the Billy Joe camp and for the Taylor camp and for other bits and bobs is he hasn't been doing any sort of training at all. Just ticking over in the gym, but not doing proper boxing training. Yeah. And he's left it a little bit too late to get himself into shape and he's not feeling it. He's not read it. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. I don't think we'll ever know. Will we? We'll never know um, the truth, you know, I know they put it down to COVID, but we never know if it's any other reason. I'd say, I'd say, for everyway boxing sake, that his mental health is where it needs to be because let's yes, have it he's right. He's a showstopper, isn't he? He's the biggest name in the division. Yeah, we, yeah, he is. He is. He's the biggest name in the division. He's the, he's the, he's the best fighter in the division. Mm -hmm. He just needs, kind of like Ray says, in a way, he's got to go and prove it though against Joshua. Because that's the only person really now that that can have any argument. Well, you never fought me, so you'll never know. Yeah, like I said, let's hope that um, if October comes off, 
the fight takes place and he's back to where he needs to be. Um, but I agree with Ray a little bit where I don't think America's necessarily, in what you said, America's not necessarily the best place for him. A lot of distractions, um, you know, and I think sometimes he, he needs John Fiore who's going to tell him how it is. He told him when he'd lost too much weight. He told him when he needs to get a new trainer. He's, and to be fair to him, he's not often been wrong, has he? And Tyson list, listens to him every time as well. You know, as soon as he's cut, almost as soon as he said that, he got rid of Ben Davidson. Into yeah, you know that John's you know, he's, he's on. Man, he, Tyson might be Tyson might be a big a big bad monster, but at the end of the day, his old man's still the king. His old yeah. man's still the boss, um, and he listens to him. But but while or as long as he's still sat out there in America, his old man's not in his eyesight, is it? And he's not in his thoughts and he's going off and doing the making decisions for himself. And like you said, listening to yes men. Um, and I really hope that's not the case, but it doesn't look great. It doesn't look great from, from, from the outside, from the outside yeah. at, the, at, the, at the Tyson Fury camp, does it? No, and it gives Wild, like we say, it gives Wilder a bit of an edge mentally, doesn't it? You know, it hands it emphasis back to him a little bit. Is there, a, is there a possibility that Wilder has a warm-up now? I wouldn't imagine so. No, no, I think you'll just wait. Because if you just get caught, so I wouldn't I think, imagine. That. I think what you'll just do is use this as a time to bond with that Malik Scott. Yeah. Who who he seems to think is the, the answer to every question that he poses. And, and yeah. that's what, in my opinion, it makes the weaker fighter stronger, this, this little break. That's mm -hmm. what I worry about. I mean, Tyson's overcome bigger obstacles before. So I we forget how just how much weight he lost and how you know incredibly looked in that first fight. So if you can get if you get his mojo back, we'll have no worries. But because we know know what Tyson can be like when he's down, when his head's not in the game, you can't help but think, is he going down that path again? Doesn't look great though, does it? When you see him standing on tables and and jumping up and down in bars. He might not have even been drinking. There might have been water in that glass or whatever. A bit of lemonade. But um, just jumping up and down in a bar, mm. you know, acting acting the fool, so it's not a very good look, is it? When he knows full well that he's, that he's either fighting Joshua or he's, or he's fighting Wilder, whether he, whether he knew about that or not, it, it doesn't really matter to the point. Mm. He was fighting one of them. Mm. And he's jumping up and down on on tables in a bar, dancing around like an idiot. Yeah, I mean, let's, let's not make too many assumptions. Though, because we're making a lot of assumptions, you know. Let's just hope that he's back in the ring in October, you know. And let's just hope that he's back on track. We don't even know he's off track, do we? For honest, there's no call. All we can do is make assumptions because no one's coming yeah, out and saying exactly. It. I was just about to say that. Yeah, yeah. there's no facts. It's, it's all about opinion, mate, isn't it? That's what this show's yeah. all about. I know, and. Uh, and I, I know what, where you're coming from, but what what else can we think? What else can we say? Mm. If if it looks the way it looks, and it does look the way it looks, and until somebody comes out from the Tyson Fury camp with a with a positive COVID test in their hand, or, he, or or this proof from an hospital or or something to put it to bed. Then people are always going to think that they're always going to think, "Oh, he was just trying to play for time." I do wonder if they provided evidence to the Wilder camp though, because they've been very quiet. Yeah, and maybe. If they, and if they've smelt a rat, they'd, they'd be all over it, wouldn't they? After the stick that Wilder had um, yeah. given Wilder, I've, I've, I've seen on some articles um, that that they've had doubts. This 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 being one or two that they've had doubts, but. Have you, have you, argue, maybe, Wilder's you know, kept himself maybe, quiet throughout, hasn't he? He's, he didn't say anything at the press conference. He's not said anything much. Most, I mean, he, he did an interview with Mike Costello and he was giving Mike Costello one-word answers, just basically saying he cheated. Come July any, 24th, you'll find out the truth. If anything, like Ray's just said, this this Wild, Wilder's probably happy about this because it gives him more time with his trainer. Yeah, yeah. So, so he's not going to jump up and down and force Tyson Fury to fight him on... <laughs> 24th, he's now got a, a few more months to get himself. Well, it can't happen on the 24th, but the angle I'm coming from is Wilder could have quite easily put it on him by saying, You've dodged me. 
and blah 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 just to try and get a bit of mental edge that's where yeah, maybe I don't know whether Wilder even thinks he can do that to Fury. Maybe he's not bothered. Maybe he's just thinking, oh. what's the point? He made himself look a bit stupid trying to do that 300-pound bench press, didn't he? Yeah, or you, or you could argue that the damage is already starting to be done to Fury. He's probably being advised to think, look, Fury's doing it upon himself. They, they'll say that he cheated. They'll say that he's got a reputation for dugging out of fights. And then they'll say, look, there's what he does again. We, we'll just focus on our camping and our boxing. Well... I hope Fury just gets his head down now. Gets <coughs> his COVID if he has got COVID. Um, gets his head down. Gets himself in camp. Does the right things. Um, and then dispatches a Wilder. So we can talk about the proper fight. Mm. Yeah. Okay, let's move on to the next topic then. So, just bear with me. So, a bit of an intro. So, obviously, this is still rumbling away regarding Canelo's next appoint opponent. Quite interestingly, that like yesterday, a lot of boxing channels were reporting that Caleb Plant still remains the number one choice. However, they are starting to consider a Bivol at one at one seven five as a plan B. Hey, did you say Bivol? Bivol. So, and I'll let you take that way first. That's a bit. That's a bit of an easier choice, isn't it? I'm not too sure, but yeah, go on. I let you. I let you give your spiel on it. Um, I like. I like Bivol, but he's probably the easier of the champions at at um, at light heavy. Why? He's he's not as hard a puncher. Um, it's, I think it suits Canelo's style he'll bring it in and Canelo will just pick him off I think he's a great fighter Ray don't get me wrong but he's easier for, for Canelo to get to and he don't he don't punch as hard <coughs> I think Bivol on the outside is very very impressive very impressive i think the the win he had against richards because of how richards performed out of his skin and some um gave some people a sort of false idea of of bill's ability i mean this is the same bivel that beat joe smith jr uh this is the same bivel that you, you know, he was he was walking through everyone at, at, at light heavy. He's not out to slow down a bit, but his opponents have become better. His defenses have become better. Uh, he was he's, he's well schooled. But th there's think that's it, kind of my point. He's become his opponents have, have become better, a yeah. better level. So he's not knocking them out. No, but that that Which doesn't mean he can't. That, that Canelo's that not going to be scared of his power. Yeah, but then again, w w what you've got to look at is. That's generally what happens anyway. Like with with, with most people, is it's a step up through the levels, and the, the opponents get better. That they, they, they're not going to become less and less. It's only a very few who unless who, you build, who, unless who, you build top draw, yeah, yeah, who will translate that across. I still think Bivol's a very open a, a, a opponent for Canelo. Um, I mean, this is this is what you want to see. This is what we call, and what I say, Canelo's daring to be great. But I just. I've just got a lot of time for Bivol, and I think the likes of Bivol and Beterviev. I mean, he, he's, he's had a fight at 175. He, he fought uh, Kovalev and he stopped Kovalev. But I, I couldn't call Bivol. And I know what you're trying to say. He's easier than. He's, yeah, he, he may be easier than Beterviev, but. It's a lot easier what, than Beterviev because of Beterviev's power. Well, well, what you've got to remember as well, Andy, is Bivol's got a very good jab and a very good backhand to go with it. If you look at the Canelo fight, uh, sorry, the Canelo fight against Kovalev, Kov uh, Kovalev was beating Canelo off the jab and then using the back, the backhand just to back it up. That's what Bivol will be doing all night long. Plus, Bivol's got faster feet. And he's got better head movement. So there's a possibility Bivol mm -hmm. could outbox Canelo. Do you see what I'm saying? So I don't necessarily, I, I don't necessarily think that Bivol can just go for the knockout here. 
he can actually outbox Canelo, and there's very few people who can do that. Kovalev did it, but Kovalev had just come off a tough fight against Anthony Yard because he gave him hell in that ninth round, Anthony Yard. He didn't have too much of a training camp, and he was straight back in with Canelo, pound for pound number one. Bivol will have all the time in the world because Bivol will probably still be training now, and Bivol's a lot sharper than what Kovalev is. So there's a lot of attributes in that fight which make me not not worried for Canelo, but doubt him in this fight. I don't, I don't worry for Canelo in the slightest, mate. We, we said all this about about um, um, Callum Smith, didn't we? Oh, he's got the reach, he's got the, he's got the jab, he's got the power, he's got the strength. And Canelo took it all away from him. He, he did, but Smith was dead at the weight. Yeah, I, think, the weight. I think Bibble beats him. I nah. really fancy him. Yeah, I do. I do. I fancy Bibble to beat him. I've always thought that. I've, I've, not the first time I've seen it, Ander. I think if he has a Bibble fight, um, I really fancy Bibble. I really do it that way. I think 175 is a step too far for Canelo. Canelo, yeah, yeah, yeah. I do. Yeah. I don't against, have to agree against, with Carl. Against, against Petervia, yeah. I'd agree with you. No, I think Bibbles... Because of his power. Canelo, Canelo won't like that power. He'll, he'll, he'll stand with, he'll stand with um, Bivol all day long, mate. And, and eventually... He's, the thing is, Canelo's, Canelo's that smart, he'll find a way. He always does. I agree with what Ray's saying. He'll be losing the fight. Absolutely. He'll be losing the fight. He will get to him, though. And he will stop him. But Bivol hasn't got pillow fits either. He's nowhere near Berbatev. Berbatev's going to be wrong, but he, he, he hasn't got pillow fits. No, I, no, no, I'm not saying he has. I just stick to my point where I think 175 is a step too far for Canelo. That's my view. Against, um, the, very, against the very best at that, at that weight, I completely agree with you. Well, I think Bivol is one of the best at that weight. One of, yeah. He's not the best though, is he? But it'll, it, that, it'll be enough to oversee Canelo, I think. That's, that's my I think opinion. there's only one person better at Bivol at, at 175, and that's Petrovyev. That, and he, he, that's why I stayed away from him. He, he won't go there. Mm. I mean, don't well, get me wrong, he's very brave. Canelo, like mean, you just said, he's daring to be great, isn't he? Mm -hmm, that's mm -hmm, why he's mm -hmm. taking these fights. That's why he's, mm -hmm. he's, he's even contemplating moving up to, to, to fight the best yeah. fighters at, at that division. Yeah. Well, there's no he one there. He wants to be Canelo wants to be known as the best fighter ever. If he carries on the way he's doing, he's fighting, and knew he's fighting, there's an argument that that somewhere down the line that that could be the case. And in the sidebar, we can we know we have got Canelo's biggest fan on the on at the minute, Silvio. <laughs> so Silvio says um, Canelo, that guy sucks. Um, he won't fight Bibble. So interesting. Unfortunately, I can't see anything in the in the sidebar because uh, I'm on my phone. But I know Silvio's such a a big fan of uh, Canelo. Silvio. Sylvia, come on, don't hold back. Tell us what you really think. Yes, get get them <laughs> spins out of your backside, Silvio. Not <laughs> so, so so. Like I said, they're the, they're the two options on the table at the minute, and it's still very interesting, isn't it, regarding where that if it is a kind of planned fight, where which broadcast is it going to land on? I still say the zone, but I know um, they've offered him a one fight deal now, haven't they? Um, PBC and Fox, PBC. yeah. So it'll be interesting because I've got a virtual coffee ride on that, as Ray knows. Well, the, the thing is, you know, I know you, uh, you two, were sitting, were saying to me, Canelo's desperate for this fight. Well, we'll see. We'll see how desperate he is. Um, well, it was a free fight deal, wasn't it, with PBC, and, they, and they've rolled over now, haven't they? So yeah, 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 yeah. You know, yeah. And really, that's what I'm saying. If he was that desperate, he would have taken it. He would have taken the free fight deal, but. We'll, we'll see what happens. But Eddie Earn said he sent a... Um, a, a yeah, so maybe, like you would do, why wouldn't I? Ken Allo's going to think, well, I've got a bit of a bidding war going off here. Mm -hmm. Why am I going to sign something to her there? Mm -hmm. But he, he, he could be... The problem is, Al Haven's so stubborn, and we talk about the politics of bo boxing and how it, it, it holds the sport back, but he really is that stubborn. And he, he may say to Caleb Plant, look, don't fight Canelo. 
you want X amount of money, I'll pay you. Because you've done this with James the Gill before. That's why with these PVC fighters, you, you'll all hear them in the interviews thanking Al Heyman. Yeah, Nobody yeah. sees him, but he's thanked in every interview. It's because he pays them sort of like um, some sort of interim money. I mean, I've heard Eddie Hearn do it before. Lewis Richardson's come out and said it. he does it. He gives them like a little bit of pocket Stand money. They, they call it before Christmas. But instead of getting giving fighters like 10, 20,000, like what Eddie Hearn does or what Frank Warren used to do, Al Heyman's giving them six figures. So, you know, he, he, all he needs to do is p give somebody like Caleb Plant six figures and just or, or or a million and just say hang on i'll get you a fight with somebody else or the winner of benavides and um the guy whose name i can't always pronounce but Caleb plants already beating this guy benavides is having a fight against him i think he's soon be with you um us, us the guy or something like that and you could say to Caleb plant well why don't you not just fight the winner of that and then if you, once you've won that fight you can go up and fight with me at 75. Yeah, Benavides is a is a serious operator. If he can if he can make the weight properly, he, yeah, he, he, he could be good. I mean, I've got my doubts about him because he gets hit a lot, but there's there's options out there for Caleb Plant as well, as well as there being options for Canelo. Yeah, I don't think I don't think Caleb Plant really wants it, mate. It'll be his best payday. Be his best payday, but he, but he's also gonna lose his world title and lose his 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 cash cow into. This is this is and this is the point I was making when I was hinting people he's pricing mm. himself out the fight. He's doing it deliberately. You know, he, he's he's um he's sim similar to Billy Joe in a way, although Billy Joe's different. Billy Joe generally thought he could beat Canelo, so did Callum Smith. I don't think Caleb Plant does. I think Caleb Plant's just selling selling his belt for as much as he can. It's an insurance policy. Yeah. He knows he's not gonna probably not gonna get the he's he's he's, he's not gonna get the win here. He may get another opportunity while him and on his side. Of course he will, but he's not going to win this fight. So that's probably why he's demanding as, as, as much of the money as, as possible. Even if he gets another chance to win a belt, though, mate, it's certainly not going to be for the money, is it? He's not yeah. going to get anywhere near the money that, that he could get for this fight. Exactly. And, and, and it's only once Canelo's vacated them and moved yeah. up. That's the only chance he's going to get a win the belt back. And they're still talking about possibly September the 18th for that plant fight. It was that, that's what that's the latest date being right, moved. It's been pushed back a week, right? Yeah, that's what they're saying. Um, you see Canelo going back down once he's unified, once he's uh, become undisputed. Go, go, going back down to super middleweight from light heavyweight, you mean? Or, or middleweight. Going, middleweight? going back down to, to um, middle? Nah. Nah. No chance. Really? Absolutely, I can't think of a fight that would entice him. Triple G. To... Yeah, but no, sure, no, you'll, you'll, you'll have but Triple G to move up. If that's the I... case, then Ray. If that's the case, then it's an e it's an easy it's an easy three three or four fights to become undisputed at that weight. Then he's really cementing his legacy into what a middleweight. Yeah. Can you can you see him making middleweight? So you got to lose a bit of mass. I, I can't see him. I can't see him doing it. I really can't see him. Can't see him doing it. I, I, I think it's not that he's he, not. That he's too big for the. It's not. He's too big for the weight. He's too big because of his because he's, his he's uh, the muscle he put on yeah. to make the weight he's making. That that can come off. Just, I, I, yeah, I, I, I can't <laughs> see him boiling down to middleweight. It's and, not boiling and, down, and, though, is it? He's not losing. It's not that he's got to lose more fat. He's he's, he's just got to he come off the weights a bit, stay away from the beef for a while. I just it's it's it's, it's still boiling down though because you he's got to lose because it's it's muscle. It's not like fat he's got to got to lose. Yeah, so, still to lose. Still lose. It, it'd be right. difficult. I can't I can't see him doing it. I can't see him doing it, and I don't I don't think the connect the Golovkin fights there for him anymore because Golo um, Golovkin Golovkin's been taught either fight. I uh, Andrade, um, so or 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 or, or, or Charlo. Okay, then. so let's let, or... let's look at it like this then. Let's say he gets the plant fight. Yeah, he becomes undisputed. Mm -hmm. There's nothing for left for him at super middleweight at all. He's beat everybody. Then he goes up and he fights Bivol or whoever 
as a one fight off at uh, light heavy. He isn't going to try and clear that division up because, like you've said, he's not big enough. So then what? He just retires? No, he just has maybe a couple of more fights. It's still probably Benavidez, Ramirez. That's a big deal. It's a big fight in Mexico. And let's, be honest. let's be I honest. Let's be honest. Not retiring anytime soon, in my opinion. <laughs> but the big not fights, well. the big fights anyway with Canelo, aren't they? You can throw him in with um, a, a, a average super middleweight, and it's going to be a bigger fear, isn't it? Throw him I mean, in with I mean, no, no one says. No, Can one says Canelo's... He, 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 no one says he retires. It's just physically, he'll not. He'll not. Why would he lose his advantages and cut and come down to one hundred and sixty? He's in the position now, same as what Mayweather is. If you want to fight me, fine. You fight me at the weight that I want to fight at. I'm not coming down to your weight. You want to fight me? I'm the boss. I'm the A side. You yeah. can't see me. He's still going to be the boss at middleweight, though, isn't he? No. Of well, he is. he's look. You uh, the, 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 lose advantages going down to sixty. He's got the ability. Yes, he'll be the boss, but he physically can't make that weight. He can't make. Where was the last time he fought a middleweight? It was quite some time ago, but that yeah. that was that's personal choice. That's just to that's because he's he's become the size an athlete that he is. Yeah, but but cool. give, give him time, it, he can make that weight. It, it, give him time, then, he can make that weight. But but then they said the same about Roy Jones, and I think what you've got to remember is there's one thing making the weight, and there's another thing performing at the weight. Look at look at look look when Roy Jones went up and when he came back down. Yeah, so he so, still, right, so right, right, to weatherweight though, didn't he? Yes, but it's still, you know, I mean, he goes up to he goes up to uh, 175 pounds and he comes down to um, middleweight. That's still 15 pounds. Yeah, Roy I, Jones. I, I, I'm not. Yeah, I'm not saying. He, I'm not saying. He, I'm not saying he's going to do it for his next fight. No, no, no. But even even if even if at some point he does it, let's just say in a year's time, I just can't see his, his body his body letting him do it. And remember, he's getting older all the time. It's a lot difficult to cut weight as you as you get older and older and older. Isn't yeah, it? Because it becomes a natural. It becomes, a, it becomes a natural for your for your body to just to hold on to that extra water. So, so Canelo's biggest fan, Silvio, has put. I think Canelo is too small for that division, as in light ever. Yeah, Bivol is super crafter and a very solid fighter technically. Yeah, but Tiobiev will really hurt him with his punches. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. there we go. I would agree. I, I think we, we've seen probably arguably two different styles that can beat Canelo um, by putting pressure on him with the jab and following up with a backhand, which Kovalev did and Bivol can definitely do, and then putting pressure on him on the front foot with body punches, which is what Golovkin did in the first fight, and we all know Paterviev can do that. So the big problem he's got is he's got two big guys who've got the styles to beat him at light heavyweight. And I, I, gen steps. I genuinely think, Ray, he won't hang around in the sport that long. I've, you've got to remember what age he's been boxing since. He's 15, yeah. So I think it, it, it'll make his... It'll, it'll, it'll create wherever he thinks that legacy is. And I think he'll get on his toes. Um, he's, he's already starting other ventures, isn't he? You know, his promotion company... You know, so I, I generally think he won't be one of these fighters that goes on goes on forever in a day. No way. No way. Any other thoughts on Canelo before we move on, boys? No. No, no so let's move on to Tank Davis then. So quite a lot of noise coming out, isn't there, about um, Tank at the minute, about what he's going to do next, etc. So are, are we talking about two-weight world champion Tank Davis? Three. Yeah, no, I know he's a favourite. He's not a three weight world champion, is he? Well, he's not a two weight world champion. He's, he's just the um, he's mm. only got the one legitimate one for me. Tim Pot, Tim Pot, world champion. Yeah, you could say that. So before you carry on about um, it, what he want, what he want, let me do a minute an intro. So latest rumours is going to be fighting Joseph Diaz Junior. As his next fight, looking at October. Um, no joke. Joseph Joseph Diaz Jr. has been calling out Devin Haney and Ryan Garcia, though. Um, but the, the, the scene rumor has it that, that 
tank and Joseph Diaz Jr. could possibly happen. It's quite far down the road in terms of negotiations. Yes. So, Ray, we'll let you kick off this one. Firstly, what I'd like to ask you, do you think this is a pay-per-view fight? It's going to be. Yeah, it is. It's going to be, but... Um, well, if if the Barrios one was, then yeah, this is going to be. Um, I mean, he was he was a former world champion at uh, Super Featherweight, um, Joseph Diaz. So yeah, on, on that logic, yes. Um, do I think it's going to be his next fight? I mean, I've I've also heard Tank Tank could be fight lined up to fight um, Gary Gary Russell. Um, if they try to get Gary Russell to step up, make that fight a lightweight. I was gonna. I was gonna say, <coughs> Tank's not going back down again. Well, he'll not go back to one thirty, but he could still do lightweight if he's disciplined. I think he could do lightweight. I, I see him as a natural lightweight. I yeah. don't see him as. I don't think he's going to be hanging around one forty. I don't think well, he's, he's only got. He's only got one fight if he does, Hunter. Yeah, I yeah, think I, I don't think he'll. I I hear a lot of our, um, a lot of people I've been talking to in America. And they 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 think he he knocks out everybody at one forty. Um, that's not the case. Um, he, he has got special power, yes. But he's got to get to the answer. That's the yeah, problem. Yeah, right? I can't see him. He, he, he's not a big lad either. Um, mm. This, you know, he uses his feet well to close the distance, but so do the top boys at that, that weight class. I think it just might be a bit too big for him. But to answer your question, um, I think it'll be an interesting fight, especially on the inside because Jojo Diaz is a very good body puncher. We saw that against Fortuna. Um, Obviously, doesn't Diaz, is a, Diaz is a, a natural super feather, though, isn't he? Well, he looked quite he looked quite big against Fortuna in um in that fight um that I saw. He, he I mean he, he's come up he's come up from twenty six, so he's come up from featherweight. Was that was his last fight, Fortuna, wasn't it? Yeah, that was on yeah. just the other day. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, so Diaz isn't a bad fighter, but again, I was I've been hearing that Diaz was supposed to be fighting Haney, um, or yeah, he, he called him out, the, didn't he? He called him out during the last fight. Yeah, yeah, him. yeah. That would be. I think I think he he could get to Devin Haney. I don't think Devin Haney's going to like those body shots. I don't think Devin Haney is going to keep him on the outside of that jab all, I, all for twelve rounds. I so, read somewhere that that Diaz has has got a suspension hanging over him. For the Cal from the Californian Athletic Commission, is that right? I've not read that. No. Well, is is this because it was was where where do you see this box wreck? Yeah, that may be because. Correct me if I'm wrong, but when the American uh, or Canadian fans or whoever it might be, but it seems to if it, that may be simply because if you've had a fight, they'll suspend you so you don't fight within a certain amount of time. For for head oh, right, or something okay. like that, um. So so it, it just it it just it's not, for anything, it's not for anything he's done wrong. Then. Nah, nah. It might be like okay, you've had a fight. It's it's went the, the distance or what have you, um. And and the the medical advice is that you you don't fight within six months or or three yeah. months or whatever it is to avoid getting trauma to the head. It it might be that. Right. There's, there's no other reason why he would be suspended. Um, but usually that type of information you see on box rec just after just after somebody's had a fight. That's why I say it was from from box rec. But for me, t Tank, the problem with Tank is this whole PBC thing, this whole Mayweather saying won't he let him oh, fight in 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 house fighters? That's going to be when we're talking about on the top of the show, Tyson Fury and legacy. That's what's going to harm Javante Davis's legacy for me the fact that because everyone's saying it's it's not him not wanting to fight it's other people but yeah. then when you've got somebody coming out openly and saying well you're going to let him fight in-house fighters then you've got to question him you've got to question his team and say but you're openly saying we're steering him away from fighters from golden boy from the zone match room top rank because all all the big cats seem to be a lightweight seems to be in the round top rank. So, you know, Lopez, Lomachenko, uh, even even a fight with Richard Comey, the Guardian, that would be a good fight for Tank. That'd be a good fight because he's tall, he can bang. Um, this is um, 
this is Mayweather being smart, this is mate. Because he knows how much trouble them other lightweights are going to give him. So he's saying, well, we're going to fight the fighters in our, in our promotion. Mm. So, so he don't have to fight them fighters. I think the, the, the thing is, Andy, I would agree if Tank, if there wasn't something about Tank, I like Tank. I think some of those lightweights he fares well against. Yeah. For example, Ryan Garcia. I see him beating Ryan Garcia because Ryan Garcia is too mm. upright. He pulls away when he's when he's on the inside and he wants to get back on the outside. He pulls away instead of taking his feet back. He's also he, not ring smart enough yet. He hasn't got the ring IQ yet. And he, he, he's a bit wild with his hooks. He leaves his chin exposed. I think Tank is one of those fighters that, you know, he, he, he may take three to land his one against Ryan Garcia. But when he lands his one, Ryan Garcia is not like getting that. back up. Yeah. And so Davis is going to get Davis going to get better and better and better. Davis is. Well, it's depending on who on who he's put against, because you could argue the the same for all of them. Ryan Garcia, Haney, Lopez, they're all in their own way got some degree of serious skills, whether it be power like Tank and Garcia, or whether it be out and out skills like Lopez and Haney. So you would expect them all to improve, but at, they're at a stage now where they're all still relatively young, They've, they have to be matched with each other. They've had enough warm-up fights, fights to get themselves yeah. known. It, they need to be matched amongst each other because they're at the point where they're all claiming to be the best in the division, but they haven't fought. The only, the only two people that have fought each other is Lomachenko and Lopez, but that's it. Do you think We've Davis got... relies a little bit too much on his power? Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and yeah. For I mean, me... The, the, reason I'm saying that, right? the reason I'm saying that is because if he does come up against the, these other top end fighters in the division, that's where he's going to come unstuck. Yeah, not not as much as what Garcia does. I've still seen little bits of Tang's game. Um, I mean, I saw him. I mean, the first time I saw Tank, I don't, you guys will probably remember this fight, was when he came over to England and he fought um, Liam Walsh. Yep. Yep. And he absolutely obliterated Liam Walsh. Wasn't that on Channel 5? No, it was on, uh, no, was it? Was on uh, BT. BT. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it was either on BT or Box Nation. I can't remember. And um, That was almost his breakout fight a little bit, wasn't it? Over it, it was for me because that was the first time yeah. I saw him. Yeah. First time I saw him. And he absolutely took him apart. Um, and then I, I, I heard about that fight against Pedraza. I watched that afterwards. I thought, who is this tank? I watched the Pedraza fight, which was before the, the Walsh fight, and I saw some quality there. Um, you know, you, you watch him in Leo Santa Cruz fight. I, the thing is, I know where Andy's coming from because he, in the Barrios fight, in the Santa Cruz fight, there was elements where he was getting outboxed. Yeah. Leo Santa Cruz fight, I think I had Leo maybe a round or two up by the time that Tank stopped him. And this is a, this is a, this is a spent Santa Cruz as well. This is not a prime Santa Cruz. Well, I, I, I think that the, 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 the point is he, he, he was, yeah, he was, he was, <coughs> at some point it looked a little bit easy to outbox him. And um, you, you expect that, I mean, he's only 5'5". Five, five. He moves his, like I said, he moves his feet in uh, pretty good to get in range, but he, he can't be out box, so he is going to struggle against your physically bigger men. So I, I don't see him having the same success because you've got to remember Santa Cruz isn't a hard puncher. Barrios hits you clean and often enough. I wouldn't necessarily say he's a dangerous puncher. Problem is, he's going to be facing somebody like Lopez, who him is a dangerous puncher. You know? he's, got some, he's got some following in America, though, and Tank Davis. He's popular, isn't he? In oh, yeah, he's, he's popular. He's popular with the same people that the likes of Mayweather, Shakur Stevenson, yeah. um, Broner, Errol Spence. Um, these P The PBC following, I call them in America, where you've got that urban African-American following, and he's very popular amongst, amongst that, 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 that demographic. And but he, he can't actually fight. It's it's not like a, he's not like a Jeff Lacey, where no. it's like you know this kid can actually fight. 
He's a but, dangerous, mate, dangerous guy, isn't it? He? He's a dangerous yeah, guy. He is. He is. He's, a, he's, a, he's, a, he's what I call a serious don because he, he's, he's power. He's, he's always going to have that power. He, t he takes it until the 12th round, you know. Um, he's a bit like a little mini wilder. He, he, he carries that power. He's not like there's three, maybe you could argue four, but Golovkin's fading. There's three serious dons when it comes to power and boxing. Inoue, Tank and Wilder. The difference why Inoue is a bit more special than Wilder and, and Tank is because Inoue doesn't get outboxed. He mm. can box on a front foot and a back foot. He's very different from the other two and he's got a decent defence as well. Okay, yeah, he's open up born broken. But aside from that, he doesn't really get hit clean. Uh, and he's got a chin where Tank, because of his physical attributes, he can't lend himself to see he, he, he's, 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 a, he's a boxer or he's, he's, if anything, he's more of a, a, a box puncher. He takes a lot to get in on the inside to, to land what he does. Um, but he's skilled at doing so. You know, he just doesn't just walk in. He can cut the ring off as well. He did that against Barrios, and it was, it was honestly it was tremendous to watch. So yeah. I do like Tank, but I'm I'm just worried, and I would love it. His next opponent to be um, Jojo Diaz because he's a credible opponent at a right weight. Um, but I, I just think Mayweather's got something up, up his sleeve, and I can see him getting somebody out from PBC. Some is JJ you know, maybe, maybe, the golden boy. Uh, yes. Yeah, friend of the sh friend of the show, by the way, friend of the show. Just to get yes, that in there. Yes. Yeah, drop that one in. Yeah. So, so that that, that does it for Tan Davis tonight, and boys. Let's go on to our final, well, one bit final topic. We, so we're going to cover Charlo versus Castano. Um, so obviously, it takes place Saturday night um, at one fifty-four. I'll give my little gambit first. I've done a little bit of homework on Castano. It's not one that I really know, I'll be honest with you. I'll tell, you, I'll tell you what, Carl, we need Silvio for this bit. Because he's a massive yeah, player, Brian yeah. Castano fan. If you can spare his five minutes, Silvio, let me know and I'll put, I'll put the link in the, in the chat bar. So, by all accounts, he's not a big puncher. Um, he's not a knockout artist, but, but he does like to look for the body shots. So... I'll put it out there. You two know that I'm not a big fan of these Charlo twins. I, I, I'm not. I've watched them a few times. I know. I know where you like one of them. I mean, the, the, the first names are too similar oh. for me. Oh. <laughs> put the link in, mate. Sylvia wants it. So, um, so, yeah. So, obviously, I think it's another run out for Charlo. Um, we'll see what Sylvia says in one minute. But I just think. Until Charlo has a as a uh, as a mega fight, I, I'm not I'm not going to be impressed with him. Um, to be honest with you, but Andy, I'll let you go first on this one. Um, how do you think he's going to play out? I'm a bit like you, mate. Um, I'm I don't know enough about Castano to make a to to make a proper opinion. Uh, and again, a, a same really a, a, as you. Charlo needs to prove himself a little bit. He's, he's another one of these... It, it's modern-day boxing, I'm afraid. You know, we, we look we look back at the the golden era, the 90s, the 80s, where everybody fought everybody. 70s as well. The 70s, and everyone fought everyone, and it was all about the era, the 90s, the 80s. Hey, here he is. Where everybody fought everybody. <laughs> 70s as well. What up, guys? The 70s, and everyone fought everyone, and it was all about. We still got you. Here he is. Excuse me. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, yep. Kill, kill to you two. Yeah, that's better. How are you? How are you? Yeah, we're good. We're good. Glad to hear. How are you? Good, good. Everything's fine. So, Castano then, Silvio, fill us in. Um, do you think he's got a chance on Saturday and how do you think it's going to go? I'm rooting for Castaño. He's, uh, I don't know if you guys have seen him fight. He's not a big uh -huh. puncher, but he's a, a, a big volume puncher. He puts in a, a lot of a lot, lot of pressure. Uh, with the differences, right? Uh, he he, he kind of acts like Chocolatito in that he's always constantly on top of you. Or I don't know if you guys remember uh, a lightweight fighter named Juan Diaz. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, well, yeah. Juan Diaz. Yeah, yeah. 
it's he fights similar to Juan Diaz in the sense that uh, he, he's not a big puncher, but he's like constantly on top of you, extreme pressure all the time. Uh, Castaño also had a very uh, good amateur career, while his record. Excuse me. He beat yeah, he beat Spence. Spence. yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, w while his professional record doesn't look that uh, impressive, I think he only has like. 20 some fights, or maybe even less, 19? 8, 17 fights, I think. 17, 17, 17 Yeah, but uh, he's he's fought some some pretty good people. And uh, mm. I'm very confident that uh, I mean, if it doesn't go the, if, it, if we don't see something crazy from the judges, I think he can beat them. Wow. Yeah. Do, you think he, do you think he can stop him with the body shots, Silvio? Good question. Um, like I said, he, he's he's not a, a big puncher. He's a volume puncher. Yeah. But uh, maybe if he applies a uh, huge amounts of pressure, then then maybe he could stop him. Yeah. Do you do you rate Charlo? Do you rate him? Do you think he's any good? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> the, the, the Charlo brothers, they they're not they're not bad, but. Uh, it, did you see his his other brother who fought Montiel? Yeah, Mont yeah, yeah. Like a, yeah, he's like a B or C class fighter, and and he looked horrible. Mm -hmm. right? I know, I know. Yeah. yeah, and so uh, um, I think this guy is is a little bit better, but uh, um, I I, I I honestly think Castaño can beat him. I honestly think that Castaño can beat him. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and and we can't not talk about Roberto Diaz now we've got you on camera, Sylvia. We, we've got to bring that interview up. Yeah, so, I saw it. It was nice. Uh, uh, thank you for sharing it. Yeah. So what? 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 Oh, I, I don't mind going on camera. What a genuine fella Roberto <laughs> Diaz is. Um, how humble he was. You know, it is a credit to the sport. It's a credit to the sport. Um, yeah, we, we, we was a bit in awe, boys. What we? was a bit in awe with him, you know. I, I like that that uh, I finally see that uh, Golden Boy is, is starting to uh, bring back some activity. I mean, at yeah, one point, I, mean, I thought it was going to yeah. die uh, uh, the, the promotion company, and yeah. uh, I saw they just announced one. Um, uh, uh, what's his name? A uh, Mean Machine against uh, Virgil Ortiz Jr. Yeah. Yeah, two Nicaraguans fight in that in that fight. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, so you're still happy to be our Spanish translator then? Um, when, when we need you, Silvio. You know, because it might be some occasions where you know we might need some Spanish interpretation. Because Andy knows a few words, but not enough to get us through an interview. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> <laughs> My Spanish is better than my English. <laughs> so, so Silvio, I'm just going to bring Ray in because Ray wants to have a chat about Castano. So, Ray, do you want to jump in? Yeah, um, I, uh, I think Castano's got a very good chance in this fight. Um, Sylvia, I've got to agree with you. I've seen a bit of, well, I've seen quite a bit of Jamel Charlo, and I've seen uh, a couple of um, Castanos as fights. I saw him against a Brazilian, Teixeira. Makes sense. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, um, you know, the th the thing, he, he, he's, for me, he reminds me of an old school swarmer. You'll just get in and you'll use educated pressure to cut off the ring. He'll not give you any space at all. He'll just make sure. Your back is against the ropes, and that's where they have you. And he, 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 it's not just his body punches he uses; it's a variety he uses from head to body. Um, yeah. And he, 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 he doesn't give you a moment's rest. The only thing I would say about him, he seems to be um, seems to be open for a big right hand, and that's Jamel Charlo's money punch. Yeah, uh, it's a good that you said that. Uh, he's not like super technically. Uh, he, he doesn't look pretty while fighting. Yeah, he's always like uh, full pressure, full yeah. throttle, swarming you. So yeah. uh, it, 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 he makes ugly fights. That's the truth. But but he gets the job done. And Argentinians are 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 pretty tough. I mean, uh, well, we know that. We know that. I mean, we, yeah. we've seen the likes of um, are we having Ponce. Lucas Matisse, Maidana, mm -hmm. Sergio Martinez, 
Um, mm -hmm. but, but, but this this guy's you know he's he's a legit champion, um, mm -hmm. and it, it wouldn't. Although I, I would probably, if I had to put money on it, I would have to go with Jamel. Mm -hmm. I, I wouldn't be surprised if Castagno won this. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't be surprised, and I'm just waiting for the excuses to come out from, you know, those over the pond because he's he's no. You, you're gonna have to box smart against this guy, and I can't see Jamel doing it. I can see Jamel wanting to tough it out with him at the centre of the ring, mm -hmm. and if anyone can stand there and give it back to Jamel Charlo, it's gonna be this guy. Sylvia, do you know what I'm interested to see? Um, uh -huh. They keep telling me that Charlo's a big names in America. Well, this fight's happening in Charlo's home state. In Texas, so yeah. I'll, I'll be interested to see what the attendance looks like and what the yeah. pay -view figures look like. Yeah. Because I, I keep hearing all this crap about Americans back the boxers. But for me, Chuck, for me, Silvio, they struggle to fulfill a phone box. So it'll be interesting to see what the numbers look like because i know uh, when it comes to south america if this is happening in mexico or in argentina or in your part of the world that stadium would be filled to the rafters wouldn't it yeah it could fill it could fill a soccer stadium the, the argentinians right now are very very confident that they have a, a a new undisputed champ so let's see how many are in that stadium on on saturday night because it'll be interesting because i don't think they're as big a draw as you think they are so yeah it'll be very also, from a commercial, uh, from a commercial aspect to be very interesting silvio okay yeah. you were saying something so, uh Carl? right right oh. i'm sorry yeah yeah you know the um castaño against laura yes yeah, i saw that fight mm -hmm. I, I i thought he was i thought he was a bit unlucky in that fight what did you think uh, unlucky in what sense i thought he was because i thought Laura won a lot of the early rounds, but uh -huh. I thought later on Laura started to tire because he couldn't keep yeah. up with Castagno's pace, and exactly. I thought that he, he was unlucky in terms of he should have got the decision. Okay, L L Lara, he makes uh, people look bad, and he's technical. Uh, I don't know if you guys remember when he fought Canelo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He made yeah. him look bad, uh, but but that's what I, that, that's kind of my point with uh, Castagno. It, he he doesn't tire out. He yeah. just keeps on pressuring all the twelve rounds. And if the fight goes, the longer it goes, the ch the the higher his chances are of uh, of winning by stoppage or at least just like uh, start mulling his uh, his opponent. Yeah. Um, but but do you think you should have won that fight or not? Or do you think the draw was a fair result? Uh, I think I think uh, that Castaño did uh, enough to win it. Yeah. Maybe it, it was a close fight, but but yeah. Yeah. Uh, lately, the judges have been disappointing in in a whole bunch of fights. Yeah, and it's only getting worse for some reason. And, and yeah. Sylvia, I know you, I know it's middle of your work day, so I won't keep you much longer. Okay. But just 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 a straight answer to this one, fella. Who wins? Who wins? Canelo versus Bibble? I think people can beat can beat him. Yeah, I know. I always say that that Canelo's gonna lose, <laughs> and the motherfucker doesn't lose at all. <laughs> yeah. I, don't, I don't think I don't think you picked Canelo to win yet, have you? <laughs> no. No, but, uh, honestly, I think that that that's just a smokescreen for him uh, f to get a, a, um, a, a better leverage when negotiating with Plant. I I I don't. Th I honestly don't think he has any intention of fighting Bivol or, or a better beef. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Does he beat Plant? Yeah, he'll he'll be Plant. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of I kind of had to say that. <laughs> so I don't, look, I don't look like a fool. <laughs> yeah. Sylvia, we appreciate your time. What what we have to do? What we have to do at some stage is get you on do a, do a full show about okay. South American boxing and and some tales from the past, etc. Yeah. Um, so we'll, we'll we'll get we'll get our heads together and plan that, Sylvia. Okay, because you're you're always brilliant when you come on the show. So we do thank okay. you. Yeah. We miss you, Sorry, you. Talk to you guys. <laughs> no worries. So so Sylvia, enjoy the rest of your day. Thanks for coming on, and we'll speak to you soon. Okay.
Okay, take care, guys. Take care, guys. Bye bye, guys. There he is, a legend. Legend, isn't it? Absolute legend. So, yeah, so we have to arrange that Cyber American Boxing Special where he can take his award through current and past champions. I think that'll be brilliant. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. So, a couple of things that, that we'll do. We end it then, guys. So, <coughs> we're a week further on with the Lee Wood rumour. Mm. Still no official announcements. Um, what do you reckon, guys? And Ray, just just give us some thought about. Do you think it's imminent? Do you think Eddie Hearn's old enough for announcing it? Could it be because of football? I don't think it'd be anything to do with the football. I think they'll just probably be tying up loose ends, if, if anything. Um, that's what it could come down to. I guess it's just a just just a, a, wait, a wait and see, watch and see. I think looking by the fight camp cards. Um, I don't think they're, they're anything spectacular. I think there's probably one or two. Uh, sorry, I think there's probably three or four other fights to be made to add it up to those cards to spice them up. So I think it's getting a bit been... late. Get a bit late in the day, though, isn't it? Yeah, but you know, um, th these these fights have probably been. I mean, when, when was the the, the written fight was in June, and that wasn't took for me alone until sometime late on in April, wasn't it? Um, which was still quite late for that. So it, what I imagine is these these the fighters know what's happening. They probably can't see out. Then all of a sudden they get announced. I mean, what we got? What we got till the first fight camp? Two weeks. It's yeah, the, yeah, it's on the thirty first. Yeah. Yep. Andy, what do you reckon? Just like like Ray says, time loose ends up. I don't, I don't, I don't really, I don't really know, mate. I, I mean, obviously, would be from Nottingham. Um, We've heard I, nothing locally, I, have we? We've heard nothing I, I, I'd locally. I'd love to see him. I'd love to see him fight for a world title. Um, and how great would it be if it was on, if it if it was on fight camp as well? But I just I I, I hopefully would say that that it that all these rumours are, are, are right and and it comes off, but until it actually comes off, or until somebody actually comes out and says something. We're just guessing, aren't we? Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, he, um, like, hopefully, uh, his promise to come on the show didn't he last time when yeah, something. Yeah, no, he did. Yeah, he did say come on when 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 something gets announced for his next fight. So, I mean, if, I, I'd like. I mean, I'd, he was saying that last time he was on, he was saying he was training one to. Yeah. You know, so I'm, I'm sure if if it is short notice and and something does get made, if he doesn't already know about it. Um, that, that he's going to be ready for it anyway. I mean, he's been putting quite a lot on Twitter about his about his training schedules, and he, he, he looks in proper shape. Uh, it's about time I had another world champion from Nottingham. Isn't it? I agree. I agree. So, so moving on then, guys. So, did have any of you two seen the Q and A that um, that Owen did with IFL? No, fill us in. Did you see it, Ray? No. Right, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to ask you a few questions that, that was put to Frank Warren and let, and I want you to guess the answer and then we'll do this a bit quick by guys, all right? So, the first question that was asked is, who, he put to Frank Warren, who did you do the best job with in terms of building a bottom sub? And let's go through it. They're all recent times. We've got some options. Well, I'm not going to give you no options. I want you to I want you to say who you think it is. So are you wanting us to guess who we think it is or who Frank yeah. Warren is? Well, I want you to say who you think Frank Warren said it, it was. So who, who is talking from nothing to who, to use Frank Warren's words, now has a high profile? Um. I don't know, Ricky Burns. He, he, he don't make the list. Did he not? Um, he took from nothing and now has a high profile. Um, value. So let, let me tell you his book then. 
I think you need to bear in mind that him and Bowie uh, um, didn't end on the best of terms, did they? That's because Bowie thought he shafted him. Yeah, I'm just trying to put some context of why he might have answered the way he answered. So just bear this in mind. Who's he put? So he, he mentioned Anthony Yard. He said he took Anthony Yard to you. From nothing to nothing. From nobody to a world, world title challenger. <coughs> Um, he talks about the job he did with Josh Warrington and Liam Smith. So he talks about where's Liam Smith's career gone since leaving Queensborough. You know, where he got Liam Smith a world title. Yeah, but then yeah. what do you do with him? Well, he actually regrets, he regrets Liam Smith leaving. But he kept using the phrase, he all thought the grass was greener. He... he it, it was Josh Warrington, he touched on Josh Warrington saying that when he came over to Queensbury from Matchroom, he was told by Matchroom he would never be a big ticket seller. And then... I think I think you've got to give him a bit of credit for the Warrington situation. I think he did a good job with Warrington, to be honest with you. Yeah, he did. I'm, uh, just, surprised. I'm just surprised with what he said about Anthony Yard and I think he's done a better job with other fighters that he's, he's not he's not mentioned. Um, yeah, it just sounds to be very... But that sounds like Frank Warren. It seems to be very, very... What he did as well, he, it, there's a BT photo that wasn't on screen and he went through them fights as well when Yard was on there. Uh, we talked about Fury, how he got him the, um, the wilder fight and took him to number one heavyweight in the world. So... This, hold on a minute, though. Let me just stop you there. Ennis took him to number one heavyweight in the world when he took him to Germany. That had nothing to do with Frank Warren. This isn't me saying I agree with him, by the way. <clears throat> so, yeah. So, well, yeah. What's the next question? Well, the, Q, the Q and A, let me just find them. The Q, Q and A is quite interesting. Then um, they went on to Joe Joyce and uh, and. Basically, one was saying that he feels Joe Joyce can sell out a 50,000 stadium in normal times. I, so, so, what do you think about that? No. That's crazy talk. Joe Joyce has got no profile. What do you think about that, Carl? Because I know you like Joyce, don't you? Um... Yeah, I like him as a boxer, but he's nowhere near the profile at the minute as it's start filling up. It depends who his dance partner was, to be honest, but he wouldn't contribute 50,000, no way. Well, if, um, he's, if he's going in against one of the top boys, then yeah, he does, because they sell, they sell the tickets, don't they? Not him. And that, that's, yeah. that's Carl's point. It's not him. So if, I mean, for me, he, he doesn't, he, I can't see it selling uh, him selling out, you know, the, the indoor stadiums. You know, twenty thousand indoor stadiums. I just, I just can't. Not for me, anyway. I think the bet. I think what Joyce will end up doing is, um, should, should Usyk get a world title, he'll probably go and fight Usyk in the Ukraine because he don't care where he travels, does that? Mm. So, um, so then he went on to the best five shows that Frank Warren's ever promoted. So, um, yeah. But he did name he did he did name more than I think he named one two. One, no, no, five. So do you want to start reading some off? Going back to when? Well, um, it looks like here I'd probably go the uh, I'd probably go nineties. So he's on about like Nas days. Mm. They were his, see that that was when he was in. That was when he was prime, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. So like, he did. did There's only a bit of fun, boys. Let's not take this too seriously. There's only a bit of fun for the last bit of the show. Come on, (laughs) Gary Cornish. Gary Cornish versus who? (laughs) I mean, yeah, but this, yeah, yeah. That's that's that just tells you about Frank Warren. No, you've got to go back to that era. 
They're not all from that. They're not all from that era. Go on then, Carl. Re- reel them off, and we'll we'll give out. Was, 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 right. Kaz- was there right. any Kazaki's right. face on there? This is in no. Um, Either Kessler or Lacey or what have you. No, these are in no these are in no particular order. Okay, he he does state that on the video. So he talks about Bruno beating McCall. Mm-hmm. So that's him. So I'd say that's up there because obviously yeah, he's got, got to you know yeah. he finally got his hands on the belt, didn't he? Yeah. Um, Nazim at the Madison Square Garden fight, which I believe was Kevin Keller. Yeah, Kevin it? Kelly. Yeah. Was that was that Warren? Was that Warren promotion? Um, yeah, I think yeah. it was fair to him. It was, a, it was the first time he did New York, I think, Andy. I'm sure he says that. I, I might be mistaken. Yeah, right. um, Ricky Atten versus Costa Zoom. Um, good shout. <clears throat> um, he, he did say Fury Wild and one and two. He lumped himself in there. Um, I, I believe he was co-promoter, though, if you want to be technical. <laughs> Um, and he and he also says um, he knows it was a tragic night, but McLaren versus Ben was a hell of a fight. Oh yeah. wow, he, yeah. he's not really putting that in there, is there? He, he, he said it. He just said it. The fight. He, he says. Um, and then he ended that. that did you uh, have you ever seen that fight, Ray? Sorry, brutal. McLaren Ben. Yeah, yeah, I saw that fight. Yeah, mm-hmm. uh, McLaren should have won in the first round. Yeah, uh, it, it was. It's probably the most brutal fight I've ever seen. He do. He does say that one day. They don't stop. Say, they don't stop do. toe to toe for every round. But he does say that it's one for the boxing purists. But he does regret the way it ended. So you know, he was he was quite firm in that to refer to him. Um. Hmm. And then he goes on to talk about Sky, why he left Sky and joined and created Box Nation. Um, and that's about where we are. I mean, you've got, to, you've got to put, for me, you've got to put the Frank Bruno night right up there. Because he had a whole nation backing him, Bruno, didn't he? I tell you what, though, you know when Warren talks about what he's what he's achieved and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera, he's quite convincing. He can. I know he's a promoter and he can talk, but he's quite. When he lays it out on the table about what he's achieved, I'd, I'd recommend going to watch it because he's, he's quite convincing. Oh, yeah, mate, but, 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 you can't, so can't argue with what he did in the nineties. You can't argue what he did in the nineties. So with Bob Arums, I think what, what you've got to look at is where he's at. Now. What, what I'm on about is when he starts talking about his young his young fighters that are coming through in the stable. Um I thought it's quite a compelling interview. I thought I thought he come across very well to be honest. So which young fighters are you talking about? The like people like Sam Noakes? Yeah, he, he reels them off right. I can't I, I didn't make a note of them. Right. Okay. Um, For me he, though, Carl, the, the, reels, problem, the problem with the way he promotes nowadays is He's scared for these fighters to, to lose. Look at Anthony Yard as an example. Look at Dubois as another example. He's scared for these fighters to lose early. He wants to build up the, the reputations up fighting average Joes. And the problem is then they go in with somebody half decent and they get beat. Yeah, I'm and not allowed to one again. It, it, it's not that's not how he used to promote. When he used to promote, he put the best against the best. Yeah, I That's mean, how it works nowadays with with his stable. He's not the only promoter to do that, though, is that? No, 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 but no, no he's, he's not. He's, 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 he is he is stagnating. No, I mean he's he doesn't have the stable he used to. And um, when he when he did have fighters, or they were fighting. I mean, even back in the days when he he had people like Nathan Cleverly and Tony Bellew at one point. You know, who who were they fighting? You could argue Bellew was fighting the better, better opponents, but that that was because he ended up leaving. Warren, when he had Nathan Cleverly, you, you put him up against any random European. It's a bit like what he's trying to do, Anthony York, for the WBO belt. Yeah. And by the time he gets him or somebody decent, like Kovalev, he got annihilated. Uh, he, 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 he tried to do his... I think it's because he... With Ricky Burns, he said, tried to do it slightly different. He ended up getting him Ray Beltran, Crawford, and he came, yeah. he came short against those. Yeah. But other fighters, 
you know, anytime you put his fight up against someone decent, they lost and they lost, you know, convincingly. Yeah. Well, biggest, that, biggest regret was any death that happened in the ring, which I thought fair play, you know. Yeah. And he says, um, when when he was asked how long he had left, he made a bit of a joke of it. He mentioned that he still got his enthusiasm. Um, he enjoys a cut and thrust, and he loves the sport because he must be getting on a little bit now, you know. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. in, in, nowhere near Bob Arum. Don't get me wrong, but yeah, all I'm saying is it's a very good interview. I thought it's a very, I thought it could work very well, and, and it was quite informative as well. Um, yeah, I thought I thought it was a very good interview by Mr. Warren. Um, because you don't always see it from him, do you? Eddie Earn does a lot of them Q&As, don't he? You know, a lot. But Warren don't always sit down and do that, does he? He, he doesn't, but then again, um, it is all about Eddie Hearn. Warren just, yeah, seems, yeah. To be the, Warren just seems to be the bitter ex-partner in the corner. Yep. That's it. Anything else from you boys? Obviously, you might want to talk about a couple of interviews we've got coming. We've got some big plans, haven't we? Some big rods in the fire. You know, interviews dropping soon. More live shows. Well, there's, more, there's more content coming, um, especially with, you know, the, the season, you know, Let's be honest. A couple of years ago, this would be this would be where the, the season of boxing kind of dies down. But because of what's happened with COVID, and for the past couple of years, it, it picks up again in in July and in August. So it's, it's going to be busy. We'll be busy as well. Um, you know, getting people on at the show, getting more content out there. Um, we'll be going back to putting stuff out every every day. So there's plenty of stuff for the for the viewers to look forward to. Just before we go, do you want to quickly touch on the um? Spence Pacquiao press conference. Yeah, Pacquiao's in a world of trouble. That's what that's what that's what that told me. He's in a world of trouble. Um, very very strange press conference. You know. Um, yeah, yeah. This could, <coughs> far, far the time could catch up with money on this fight for me because I think Spence is very very special. Um, he's, he's got he's got some uh, cojones, Ante Pacquiao. Yeah. He's yeah, not scared to fight anybody. You can't fault. You can't doubt that. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. What is he now? He's got to be in his forties, surely. Forty-two. Forty-two. Forty-two, and he's still got the speed. Yeah. I mean, for for me, for me, I'm the same with you. I'm the same as you, mate. He's in lots and lots and lots of trouble. Yeah. Spencer's because because what. All that's going to happen is Spencer's going to time him coming in and he's going to knock him cold. I hate to say it because Pacquiao's a brilliant fighter. He's had a fantastic Legend. career. Legend. One, one fight too many. This is against, against like you say, a very special fighter. Hmm. Yeah, I, I mean, you know, Pacquiao's very, very good at throwing combinations coming forward. He's, not many fighters fight the way he fights. And he, he throws combinations on the move. Um, and that's what catches a lot of a lot of the fighters he's put down or knocked out that's what catches them out because they're on the retreat as he's coming forward with these shots Spence is just going to time that shot and Spence is a monster at that oh. way have you seen him stood next to each other yeah yeah I, yep. I, fear, I, I, I fear for Pacquiao in this fight I really do but um, you can't, you can't uh, fault the guy's guts. To tell you that much. Yeah, and it's nice to go for a show and not talk about Terence Crawford for once, isn't it, Ray? You yeah. just brought him up now. We, we would have not spoken about him, Cole. And I'm I'm not not about you you on that. Level with rabbits, if you're going to be bringing in Crawford. Yeah, yeah. Come on, Ray. G, on that other, on the other show. Wow. Yeah. And uh, yeah. Although there is a little bit of nonsense spoken about Amir Khan on that other show as well. No, no nonsense about Amir Khan. What's that then? I've, I'm, I'm mostly missing this because I don't sit on these other panels. 
Come on then, yeah. let's, let's say the let's say the Amacon nonsense, right? I, I, I think I think Ray 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 and the presenter of the other show who shall remain nameless a little uh, looking at Amacon through rose tinted glasses a little bit. And said what? When you talk about Atten not laying it well, he said it would be Atten, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. That's that's there's no way that Ricky Hatton if you put them on the peaks. Ricky Hatton wouldn't, wouldn't touch Amir Khan, no chance. You wouldn't get on the inside of Amir Khan. Amir Khan's too quick for him. And, yeah, he's so sad. And, and there, and Triple G beats Carl Frodge as well, don't you, Ray, according to you? Or was it Imran? I don't know who said that, actually. Yeah, that was Imran, but I would I would have to, I would probably have to agree with that one. Oh, stop it. Yeah, stop it. Yeah, yeah, what are yeah, you talking yeah. about, mate? Yeah. I told you, and uh, the Frotch haters, man. The Frotch haters. And the old you know what? You know, I, I, was, I was almost proud of myself because I nearly got through tonight without kicking off. Ray. He can't, he can't, he couldn't, I couldn't outbox Triple G. He, he wouldn't need out. to. He's massive. And? Frotch is one of the, one of the, one of the, was one of the biggest super middleweights in his era. Point is, how's he? Oh, how is he? My point. Okay, okay. Number one, Frosch has only been ever been put down twice in his career. Yeah, didn't he, he get put down by Jermaine Taylor? Shots. Didn't he get put down by Jermaine Taylor? Yeah, yeah. So if he got put down by Jermaine Taylor and George Groves, and Golovkin hits harder than them, he ain't gonna get back up from a Golovkin right hand, is he? Oh, be it yourself. Do you, do you think Triple G bangs harder than George Groves? Yeah. Not for me, and I'm not a fan of Groves, but not for me. Ray, yeah, he does. He does. There, he does. He does. He does. He does. So, okay, so if that's the case, then why did Triple G never move up? I don't know. Because he's not big enough. Too small. That's why there's your answer. He's not big enough. They never went to that weight because he's not big enough. He couldn't do. He's, he's, he's about the same. He's about the same. He's about the same size as Canelo, though, isn't he? And Canelo moved up. Canelo's moved up. He moved up at the right time, though. Canelo's not stupid. He waited until all, all of those big, big super middleweights that could fight finished. Then he moved up. Yeah, but so if Golovkin got those opportunities, Golovkin could have got, gone up. Well, yeah, but we're talking about you're, you're talking about Golovkin against Frotch. Yeah. He can't beat Frotch, mate. I can't see how. How we can't, how we, I think what's happened is, and I said it, the, the win against Arthur Abraham made everyone think, okay, this kid can actually box, move on his feet and box. He's not going to do that against someone to. like Golovkin. You don't need to because he's got the chin and the power to, to, to walk through people. Golovkin's he's got a chin as well. I, 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 I think he'd have, he'd, have, he'd, have, he'd have a shoot well. out with Triple G, Frotchwood. He would stand and have a shoot out and, and Frotch would knock him out. I, I can't. I don't see it. Because oh, I don't see it. Right. I don't see it. This well, this this kind of this opens things up because clearly, if you think the Triple G beats Frotch, you clearly don't rate Frotch in the slightest, do you? I do. I do. But it's it's a bit like. Is it Ata? Is it? I'm telling you. Is no, it eight? I'm, I'm, I'm not. I just. I just. I just can't. I just can't see. I just can't see how we beat Golovkin. So Richard Brown in the side. Says Khan was a beast in his prime. Um, he makes a good second point, thank God. Uh, and I think Frotch beats Triple G too big, too strong. Richard, first part I don't really agree with, but his second part, bang on. Khan was a beast with a glass jaw. Yeah, yeah. But, but what you've got to remember is when he when he was at when he was at his peak on one forty, barely anyone could get near him. Obviously, got caught off Danny Garcia and Lamont Peterson was on drugs. But nobody Richard, else could get near him. Richard's uh, trying to trying to get me into the Calzaghi debate now. Richard, I know what you're doing, fella. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly, exactly. You, you're you're yeah. up there saying um, Carl, Carl Frotch would absolutely smash Calzaghi. That wouldn't happen in a million years. You know yeah, what I mean? I won't go as far as smash him. But well, that's what, what you said. That's what you said. All right, then. It would smash him then. Because what it would do... Calzaghi would be slapping away and Carl Fox would do the same again. He'd walk through and, and stop no, him. He, would, he wouldn't. You know, for very fact, he wouldn't. No, I'm not. I'm not. Um, if Khan's such yeah, a beast... I mean, a, you, 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 if you I'm, don't that, that, that I'm a, a Khan such a beast, why did Prescott make him do a little dance? <laughs> 
Fred Scott has cleaned him out. Yeah, and what? So he's not a he's not a beast, then, is it? He, he had no chin to be to be an elite, to be a considered an elite boxer. You've got to have a chin. You don't. Tommy Tommy Hearns never had a chin. He was an elite boxer. Well, but what I'm saying exactly, is... Exactly, So yeah, I, Calm was, part, Calm wasn't elite. that one, Carl. Calm wasn't elite for me. He wasn't elite. He's a top fighter. Top's different to elite, though, isn't it? Okay, so what was Ricky Hatton? Ricky Hatton would have beat Calm. Well, what was Ricky Hatton? I did, like, what, what well, was Ricky Hatton only got beat by the very best. He wasn't. He wasn't. Uh, he wasn't. He wasn't. He only got beat fighter. by the very best. Calm, calm would have beaten Ricky Hatton. There's oh, no way Ricky Hatton player. wouldn't have been able to time that speed. Ricky Ricky Hatton got beaten the same way. He always used to cock his hands. He always used to cock his hands before he threw a shot. He telegraphed everything. Calm would have saw that from a mile off. So you're putting Calm in the same league as Ernst now, then? No, but you, you, your your point was you've got to be if you haven't got a chin. You can't be an elite boxer. So what I'm saying is, there was elite boxers who didn't have a chin, i.e., Tommy Hearns. So your point was blown out the water with that one. No, no, it wasn't though, really. It, because... well, it was. You, 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 you said you, if you haven't got a chin, you can't be an elite boxer. So are you saying Khan's elite? Uh that's the point you made. So now we're blowing your out of the water. He was, he was, he was a better fighter than Ricky Hatton. Yeah, he got more, far more skill than okay, Ricky Allen. Okay, I, I, I agree that he got more skill than Ricky Allen. He yeah. wasn't a better fighter than Ricky Allen. No, he was a better boxer, yeah. He got more skill. He was quicker, but he wasn't a better fighter. He, well, he wasn't a better inside fighter, no, but he was a better boxer than him. Yeah, yeah, he was. So, Ricky Allen's proved against slick boxers, eventually he gets to him. Apart from two. Mm. Apart from two, apart from two, yeah. But, but, I mean, the Manny Pacquiao thing was an absolute joke. He wasn't ready for that far. He wasn't trained properly. And um, Mayweather... He never had a chance against Mayweather because he wasn't allowed to fight on the inside. Yeah, I still Teddy. think if he was allowed to fight on the inside, he wouldn't have beaten Mayweather anyway. Maybe, well, maybe not, but he would have given a much better account of himself. Cortez was a disgrace that night. He was a disgrace, Cortez was. Never let him, let, never let him fight on the inside. Rick Yatt was a lot better than he's, he's given credit for being. Mm. He gets to Khan, mate. No, I he don't does. think he does. The problem is, Ray, it, it is the thing, right, with Amir Khan. Amir, Amir Khan's great for four or five rounds. Will beat her for four or five rounds. If he could fight like that all night long, he'd be pound for pound the best. And he'd be seen as that now. The problem is he can't. He's not. He was never disciplined enough. He fought for four or five rounds, absolutely world class, and then he going to stand and trade. And then that's when Ricky Allen gets to him. Well, I've, I've mentioned that as a point before. That was his bigger problem, not his chin. But I think if he, you see, all you need to do with Amir Khan is ensure that he stays on his toes and he's yeah, and but he's, disciplined. That's my and point, he's though, right? So, the, but he, but we're talking okay about peak here. That, but he never we're did talking it. about peak when he was at his peak. He did that. He, he still like that. he did still like to trade though, Ray, didn't he? All the way through his career, that red mist come down. Yeah, yeah but then when he went back on his toes, when he was at his peak, and this is what this question is, at his peak. We have to ad agree to disagree on this one because um I think I think Atten lands, the red mist comes down, he starts to trade and he gets stopped. He gets he gets beat he gets beat with body shots. Him, I think he comfortably keeps him up there. I think he comfortably keeps him happy. And, and back to the Carl Frotch thing, Ray. Jesus, man. Outrageous. I think I think Ray's got his fishing rod out there with the Triple G comment. I think he's I think he's got his rod out. I think he's wheeling wheeling us in. Uh, you know, you know what? If if Triple G had a four at super middleweight and one one more titles at super middleweight, you might have an argument. But he never went up there because he wasn't big enough. Fotch wanted to fight him, didn't he? But um, Triple G turned the fight down. Fotch said he stood next to him and he was tiny. He stood next to him at a show and he was tiny. So, he, 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 Carl Fotch was a big super middleweight, wasn't he? He was big at the weight. And very strong. 
So I just think, yeah. Yeah, and I just think that Golovkin's had a lot of skill. And I think sometimes it's a skill that can overcome that size, especially when you fight the 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 uh, with the way Golovkin does. I think some people are, although... But the, the thing is, the thing is, right, Golovkin's made for Froch because he comes forward. He's, he's, that's what Froch plays on, that sort of fighter. Yeah, Froch but he, he struggles he, against... He, 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 he struggles against... Elusive slick fighters. I'll go as far to say that I don't think Triple G would have the power to keep Froch off him. No, he wouldn't. No, he wouldn't. I don't know. I, I know. I wouldn't. I wouldn't say that. Like, no. Nah. I'm not I, sure. I, I, I definitely don't agree. I mean, you're, you're, the thing is, Ray, you're going on that first George Groves fight when Froch hadn't trained. I'll let you into a little secret. Um, he was on a dancing show the week before. I'll let you into. I'll let you into a little secret, right? And I have this from the person that, that was in the shop at the time. Carl Froch lo loves his coffee. And uh, maybe one day when we get Froch on the show, I'm going to ask him this. Um, but I have a good authority that that um, he went into a, a certain coffee brand one day. And it was a week before the fight. And he had cake. What are you on about? What are you on about a possible coffee brand? You've had the couple for all night. I'm on about this one. Yeah, you can't, you can't, you can't, you can't, you can't tell me that the piece of So that tells me, Ray. Carl, Carl he, said, he, he, Carl he said didn't in interviews. He, he would have he would have McDonald's because Carl Froch is so naturally lean. He wouldn't put that much weight on. You that, only, but that just tells me no. Yeah, yeah but Froch has always been ten, on it. Ten pounds. In training. He's always been on it, and he he, he wouldn't eat that sort of stuff. Mm -hmm. A week before a fight, that just tells me he took that George Groves fight, the first one, way too lightly. That's the only reason the end of the, the fight went the way it went, because the second fight didn't go that way, did it? When he trained for it. Yeah, but you you've assumed that I was on a Bob Groves fight, the first yeah, one. You know, I, I, I am assuming that because you think because you, because, because you think he because, can't because, stand because, 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 because if you look at his other fights as well, um, I, yeah, I just think Golovkin, you're saying that he gets beat off. Slick fighters. Well, he gets beat off skill fighters as well. Obviously, he got beat the first time off Kessler. Um, I also Hold think on. Got... Hold on. No, hang on. I've finished yeah. my point. I've, li I've listened to you. I've, 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 I've finished my point. So Go on, when, you look at, when you look at these, 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 these other fights as well, and then when you look at uh, Golovkin, Golovkin's, <laughs> Golovkin's not just going to stand there and cleverly trade with him. Golovkin cuts off the ring pretty well as well. He's he's going to have trouble with that. Carl Froch isn't is, 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 as well as he's been big and strong. He's probably one of our least skilled uh, super middleweight champions that we've had. He didn't have the skill of James the Gale and George Groves, did he? And that'll be his undoing. I think he's underrated in the skill department. I think he's harsh. You don't do what he does and not have skill. I don't. I don't think he's. No, I'm, I'm not, not saying no, he's skillful, but I'm saying I think he's underrated in the skill department. I think he's very harsh. To be saying that he's got, you know, about his skill levels. Come on, let's have it right. Oh, Carl he's, 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 he's got, he's got, he's got where he got to because he, he, he was powerful. He, he, he hit hard, and he had a great chin and a great uh, engine, and you, you just couldn't keep him down. That's how he got to where he got to. Yeah, he had twelve like world title events. fights in a row. Oh, his, his resume is unbelievable. I agree so, with you there, but it, I, I wouldn't it, if you were to see who was who's been the most skilled. Out of all our best world champions who's been the most skilled, Carl Froch wouldn't make the top five in terms of pure skill. Well, no, because that's not his style, is it? Yeah, so that's what I'm saying to the point that Carl's making. No, but what I'm, I'm not saying top five, but I think he's underestimated in his level of skill. In in, in what way? In, in what terms way? of, he must have a certain level of skill to achieve what he's doing, or he would never get to super, he would never have that many title defences. He must be able to ride his shot. He must be able, you know, he must have certain skills. It's not all about being slick and and being like Andre Ward, is it? There's different levels of skills. I just think Carl Foch is very underrated. And it's very easy to give that throwaway comment about he's not but, skilled. But this is this these are the points that I'm, I'm seeing. These are his attributes that I'm seeing he's got though. Yeah, but what you I'm saying is pretty to look at, Ray. But you don't have twelve world title fights and be crap. No one said that he's crap, though. 
I, I'm I'll just speak about to skill level. I, I I'm not saying the most. It, it depends how you define skill. To be brutally honest with you. Yeah, because yeah, when did when did I see his crap? Because Wilders had ten didn't defenders say with WB, WBC uh, t title, and he's got to, he's got to a certain level. You didn't you say. What I mean, I, I've never said Carl Fletcher's crap. You've just obviously hide that word in because no, no. I've, ne I've never said he was crap. Never. My, what, I've said my... is, what I've said is he's got to where he's got to because he's got he's got he had deadly power in both hands. He had a great chin. Um, he was determined and he was, he was always fit as a fiddle. Even the George Groves fight, what that told me was a lot about Carl Foch because anyone else who got knocked down the way he got knocked down wouldn't have got up. No. He got up and then he ended up stopping him. That tells you just whether or not he was in shape or not, just how fit he was to go through that. He got because beat up for the, for the majority of that fight, Frosty. He was probably 60% fit and he still had enough to knock out George Groves, yeah. who was 110% fit. So we're not sleeping on Carl Frotch here. We're just being realistic about his ability. There's, there's different. See, there's different. There's different ways of looking at it. You know, from from the conversations we've had in the past, the type of boxer that I like, the type of fighter that I like, and it's a cool, yeah. forward, strong, aggressive fighter. Which is a Carl Frotch, yeah. You like your slick back foot fighters, which That's is it, yeah. it's all about opinions. Yeah. But just because. Just because someone doesn't throw loads of punches and dance on the back <laughs> foot doesn't mean that a person that comes forward as a Mexican style fighter that that is very strong, very aggressive doesn't make them not a skilled boxer. It just means they're skilled in other ways. I know I see that point, and this this is what I'm saying about the likes of Golovkin. I mean, you you, you just said that he doesn't box off. The, um, he doesn't box off the back foot, um, but he's, he's skilled in, in ways that he's coming forward. Carl but, Froch is me. That's kind of what I'm saying, that Froch never struggled against that type of fighter. That's, 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 Glockin basically would be playing to Scott, to Carl Froch's strength. And he wasn't big enough, he wouldn't have been big enough to have kept Froch off him. And why are we talking about skill? Yeah, I mean, I've just looked. He did. He did go to the World Amateur Boxing Championships and win a bronze. I know. I said that when we were on him, man. Sure. Yeah. So because he was, he was in the same tournament as David here. That's how well, they became friends. I'm, and and obviously ABA middleweight title in 1999. So bringing it back to this skill thing again depends how you want to define it. But he must have some. You know, he must have some because that's not all about knocking him out. That's about accuracy, isn't it? When you're in the no, amateur nobody, game. But again, no, nobody said the guy didn't have ability. It's, you know, it, it comes down to, do I think he, he he would beat Golovkin? And my answer is no. Yeah. Iran, what do you reckon? Um, what, what's the question? Does he beat Golovkin? Triple you know? J or Frotch? Quite an easy question for 10 to 11. Um, I think... Have you had a coffee, by the way? Let's start off with that one. Uh yeah, I've just come back. I've just come back from the. I just had like been working out. That's why I was a little late. I, I didn't even see your message. I saw it and then I jumped on. Right, so, so your head should be nice and clear after having endorphins. Then so let's say you don't talk nonsense tonight. Yeah. Um. I'm kind. Of, I'm with Ray. Like I think Golovkin. I think Golovkin was too skilled. Golovkin, as you said, go, um, Froch won a bronze. Um, he won a bronze medal. Golovkin won a silver medal at the Olympics. And um, yeah, Golovkin. I think he won it at 60, uh, 68 as well. Mm. I think he, I think he won it at the weight class above as well. So we won it at Froch's weight as a pro. Uh, I I never really <coughs> understood why Golovkin never really went up, but went up above his you know one sixty. I don't I don't understand. Uh, Canelo's gone up to one seven five. Why Golovkin, being naturally the bigger guy, never moved up? Mm -hmm. um, he just wanted to stay in his comfort zone and I've always been very critical of Golovkin because of that because I think he could have easily gone up if Canelo can go up to fight Kovalev why couldn't why couldn't Golovkin have gone up to fight Ward that's right uh, really that that was the fight to make really that was the fight to make Golovkin be Ward but in terms of in terms of Froch I think Froch yeah you're right Carl he was underrated he was a good fighter you don't win and have the run that he had at world championship level and I did say that to you uh the other day that yeah you don't have that kind of run if you're not a good fighter but again Carl Froch what he lacked in skill 
right? He made up for heart, determination, stamina, desire. Uh, that's what he made up for. Like the, the Groves fight was a perfect example. He was getting battered in that first fight. Even the second fight, really, I thought he was down, really. Um, and he he came back. Man, he he wasn't getting battered in the second fight. He was not getting was, battered yeah, in that second fight. No, he I didn't say getting battered. He said he was down. He could have been around down. Yeah, he, I'm, not saying, I'm, not, I'm, not saying, I'm not saying he got battered in the second mm -hmm. fight. I'm saying that he could have been down by one or two rounds in that second fight. That was a close fight. He wasn't dominating that fight up until he knocked him out. But, don't, don't listen to the commentary. That was a very close fight. That, I'm not wow. saying... And by the way, who said George Groves was a really slick, skilled fighter? He was a good fighter, don't get me wrong. Yeah, but, what, what, I said is, what I said is he could bang George Groves good. Oh, yeah, yeah. What, what, what Carl said was uh, George Groves hits, hits harder than Golovkin. Yeah, I did. Yeah, no, no. So he might do. He's a bigger guy. He might do, but Golovkin's a better fighter than Groves. Groves wouldn't have gone seven, eight rounds with Golovkin. No chance. That pressure. Martin Murray put Martin Murray put Groves under a lot of pressure. Go watch that fight. Martin Murray troubled Groves in that fight. You telling me that Golovkin, who's far more, and look what Gro Martin Murray when he fought Golovkin, Golovkin, and Martin Murray, by the way, very underrated British fighter, very good fighter, very not in, in Frotch's league, though, right? No, no, not in front, not in Frotch's league. But he, but anyway, um, Golovkin battered Murray. Wasn't even close. Golovkin took him apart, to be honest with you. So, um, Murray showed a lot of lot of toughness in that fight. But I just think I just think Golovkin. I don't really think Froch would hurt Golovkin, to be honest with you. And I think Golovkin was. I think Golovkin was the more superior boxer out of the two. Um, um, yeah, and I think Golovkin would have won a decision, to be honest, in that fight. Mm -hmm. That's just my that's my opinion. I, I I told you the other day. I think Froch was a very. Uh, I think Froch was probably one of the best out of the not elite. Do you know what I mean? Uh, like I said, as you said the other day, as you said the other day, if you if you made a category of like Crawford, Canelo, Lomachenko, um, Pacquiao, for example, would you put Froch in that category, Carl? You admitted that no, you wouldn't. And I would put Golovkin in that category. To be honest with you, in his prime, I think Golovkin was in that kind of league. Uh, I don't think Froch was. That's just my that's just my opinion. They, I feel like those guys that we're talking about, they're elite fighters. No, but what we're we're talking about the Triple G versus Froch fighting. and Styles make fights, not not league tables. So, no, but even yeah. stylistically, Carl, you don't you don't think Froch would get worn down by Golovkin? Like, no, I'll tell you, I think he'd be that. Carl, Froch would beat Golovkin. Froch won Jay Ward. No one would beat him. I, I think I think Golovkin could have. I, I think you think. Okay, put it this way, right? Put Golovkin in there with Andre Ward. You think he dominates uh, Golovkin like he did to? Yeah, Bob. yeah. No, no. Yeah. He too couldn't big. do it to Kovalev. Too big. He couldn't do it to Kovalev, could he? Com, com, I'm talking about size, though. Triple Golovkin in his more. prime could have given Kovalev in his prime a. a Golovkin would have been a tough fight for Kovalev. This is why I'm talking, saying. No, we're talking about Andre Ward, aren't we? Yeah, but even Andre Ward, he would have given Andre, Andre Ward, a very Ward tough would have, fight. Would have, Andre Ward would have played with Triple G at Super Middle. Would have played Imran, with him. Imran, there's a reason Golovkin never moved up, mate. And that reason is he's not big enough. Well, Canelo did it. He's five foot. He's five foot ten, isn't he? He's, he's Canelo no, he's did it. Enough. Yeah, well, he's not. He's not over six foot, though, is he? So okay, what, six foot one. Okay, but okay. So do you, do Martin, you think Andre Martin, Ward would play with Canelo? Why, why didn't he go up then? So why didn't he go up? Who? Because he wasn't strong enough. That's what, he's not stupid. He, he stayed where he was to win what he could win at that at that division. He'd have moved up with a much bigger and much stronger guys, and he wouldn't have been half the fighter. So okay, put it this way then, right? If Canelo fought, if Canelo fought of uh, um, Andre Ward, are you telling me that? Ward would have played with Canelo, this version of Canelo. No, no because Canelo is better than Triple G. Well, well, on what basis are we going off? They fought twice in two nip and tuck fights. But not at super middle. But what? Well, yeah, but the fact is, if you if and I've been no, the, what I'm saying is Triple G is nowhere near the fight at super middle. Canelo is. So, on what? Ba on, what are we basing that off? He's never not, fought at super middle. But like, if fair enough, if you're not big enough. No, but how can you say that he's bigger than Canelo, Carl? 
Golovkin's bigger than Canelo. So I've come back to my point then. So why is he not because, stepped up? Then? Because it was, poor, it was that. poor management because that, he was that, looking that, for the exactly, Canelo play there. That could come down to opportunities. How, yeah, opportunities, how, what, there how we go. Also know that? Golovkin's, not, Golovkin's not a cash cow like Canelo. Canelo had more opportunities, more red carpet than Golovkin. Golovkin, this is what I'm saying. Golovkin, you know, like, just because just because somebody didn't move up weight, that doesn't mean that they weren't capable. It's like you're saying, well, why didn't he move up weight? That's the reason he don't beat Froch because he didn't move up. We, we we don't know that. It's a bit like somebody saying, it's a bit like that uh, your Crawford pal Ahmed yeah. saying, why doesn't Errol Spence? In fact, he does say, why doesn't Errol said. Spence move up? Why why didn't Errol Spence move up? Why Errol, didn't Cal yeah, Brook exactly. move up? Yeah, yeah, yeah these yeah. guys are big enough to move up. Yeah, yeah. Why yeah. didn't they not move up? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You see my point? You can't uh, keep sitting there going, oh, Golovkin didn't... What, what, you know, what difference does it make? No, we, we, we're, dancing, it? we're dancing around the answers. But what, it just comes back to opinions. And my opinion is that Triple G would not have stopped Frotch, whether he was big or not, because Frotch banged a lot harder than him. It, it, you know, he's bigger than him. And it would have just, it, it just stopped him. But, but, I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't think Golovkin it stopped him. Because I can't see Golovkin... Getting getting stopped. Golovkin was hard. If if you ever ask Martin Murray, Golovkin Golovkin was hard, real hard. Put it put it this way, um, Carl. I think Kovalev would have destroyed Froch. That's why Froch. Okay, okay. Why didn't Froch move up to fight Kovalev then? If if Froch was that good, right? There was many opportunities. Froch could have gone up to fight Kovalev. That fight was even offered to Froch. The only but time I heard Carl Froch going up was when he wanted to fight. Um, Chavez yeah, Jr. Yeah. But Chavez, yeah, Chavez. Yeah. Right. That's what. That's when we heard that he might move up. But so why didn't he fight? If Carl Froch, right, he was big, super middleweight. That's a fair point, Imran. Yeah. Why didn't he move up? So why are we talking about? Why didn't he move up to fight Kovalev then? If he was that good and he was because, that because, because he knew he, because he knew that his his attributes yeah. wouldn't be as good at the next weight up. Yeah. That's the whole point we're making about Golovkin. But Golovkin again, Golovkin. Golovkin doesn't fight like Froch. He's a lot. He's a lot more technically sound. Froch was not as defense. Froch wasn't as defensively as good as Golovkin. Golovkin made it look like that he Golovkin would surround you and put you under a lot of pressure, put you on the box, bo bo um, yeah, back foot, and suffocate. He had a great boxing IQ. Golovkin he would suffocate you. He would absolutely suffocate you. Froch I think didn't have there's that too kind much of emphasis on somebody being Golovkin big has. and automatically win the fight. Don't get us wrong. I've said it okay, myself. So I've seen it with. Baturvia having Canelo, but that's because Baturvia still has a good ring IQ. Okay, Carl, think about it this way, right? Look at Golovkin's run at middleweight, right? Look how he dominated at middleweight. Would you say Carl Froch dominated like Golovkin did at middleweight? Because that, that's like comparing Apple and Pierce. No, 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 but no, no, but again, you're not, you're not just trying to understand what I'm trying to say. Like Carl Froch, look at his run at, su at super middleweight. Right, yeah, yeah. it was very. It, it was it like some of the fights people thought he lost, like the Darrell fight, like the Pascal fight. Yeah, but, but he didn't lose them, did he? Hey, he didn't lose them though, did he? No, but what I'm saying is that they were very close, and some of so it was. Come on, I take your point on Pascal. That was a close fight, but he beat Darrell. Even he said himself that that Darrell fight could have gone either way. Nah. He said, yeah. uh, Carl Froch... He was losing a Jermaine, Jermaine Taylor fight. Yeah, but then he knocked him out. I, I give him credit That's, for that That was fight. my point, though, Ray, about him struggling against those types of fighters, those slick fighters. Yeah, yeah. But this Which is, is why some people... I'm not saying me, but some people thought he lost the Darrell fight. Taylor was a blow. That's what I'm saying. He struggled against... But he, but he found a way, didn't he? Same with, with uh, Jermaine Taylor. I don't in think fight? Golovkin would have struggled with a Froch because Carl Froch is there to be hit. But so is Triple G. Nah, no, not no, not in the way of, not in the way. Now he is not in the way at his peak. Nah, not with that head movement. No chance. And remember, Carl Froch is far more faster, hittable than Golovkin. He would have been quicker than Froch as well. He was a Carl Froch is there right in front of you. You, you could fight Carl Froch in a phone booth. He's old school like that. Golovkin, you know yourself, Golov Golovkin's defensively cute and enough. Uh, Triple G wouldn't have been nowhere near 
Right. We're going to have to agree to disagree on this one because we're going to go around. We could be talking about this for the next four or five hours. Yeah, same with the Amir Khan one. I, I don't want to see how Hatton, Hatton beats him but at his peak. But Don't make you right, though, does it? Well, yeah, we, it's, we, it it's right. they're never going to happen, so you'll never know. No, no. No. So, but you, George, start the Amir Khan fan club. Less twin, less the twin with well, Newcastle. You guys are already chief executives of the Carl Fox. Club. Why, did you, why did you? We're not chief executives. Uh, we're, we're the owners. <laughs> right. I've, 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 I've admitted to you, Ray, that um, I don't think I don't think Frotch beats Kozaga. I know. So, so I'm not. I'm not completely biased. I'm not completely blind. Mm. But then, but then Kozaga is as big as Frotch at that weight, and he's a slick fighter. Fights off off. As much off the back foot as he does off the front foot, very quick. That's mm -hmm. why he beats him. He beats him on points. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Golovkin's going to come forward at Froch, and that suits Froch down to the ground. See, I, 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 I still see Golovkin is can he can box off the back foot as well. I don't think he's just a come forward fighter. He's not a slick back 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 foot fighter though. He's, like Froch struggles against, is he, it? He's not slick, no, but. He's, he, he, he can counter punch just as well as what Canelo can. I saw, you know, we all saw shades of that in the first fight. It's probably because Ke Golovkin has walked through everybody because he knows he can. But if he's put in that position, he can box off the back foot. Ray, he 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 fought Canelo Alvarez in two fights. In two fights that were the, Canelo Alvarez is the best fighter in our on our generation right now, right? Mm -hmm. Fights with him when he was on the slide, and he was neck and neck with him. Let's be honest, I thought he beat him the first fight, and the second fight, a lot of people thought Golovkin won the second fight as well. I think that tells you how good Golov Golovkin is. If you if you if, like Froch wouldn't beat Canelo in my opinion, and I just think Golovkin beat him. Let's be real. Golovkin beat him that fight. So, the Golovkin is, is an elite, elite fighter. You don't give Canelo that kind of fight. doesn't matter what weight class if you're not, if you're not a special fighter. Golovkin yeah. was just underrated. He didn't get the opportunities, and that's it. Mm. Froch, and Froch was with Eddie Hearn and got great opportunities towards the end of his career, which made him, which made him a bigger star. Um, but in terms of Golovkin, Golovkin didn't get those opportunities really, and when he did, he got, he got, he got robbed. Let's be honest. Look at Golovkin's legacy. Everybody's doubting Golovkin and not giving him the credit now because, on paper, he's lost to Canelo and he's drawn with him. And really, he could have had two wins over the guy. Mm -hmm. Then we're gonna look back <coughs> at Golovkin's legacy and say, well, oh, he lost, he lost to Canelo and he drew with him. But really. <laughs> He should have had. He should have had a win, and that would have made his legacy look so much greater. So I, I mean, feel for Golovkin. He, 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 lo he lost the second fight to Canelo to me. Yeah, yeah. He, um, lost, but he won the first fight, didn't he, Ray? Did you think he won? Uh, the nah, I think, I, I think I think he won the first fight. I, I don't. I don't. To be fair, uh, you don't. Every time I've scored it, I've either scored it one round to Canelo or a draw. I've never actually given it to Golovkin. Nah, and I've watched it loads, back loads. Same with Andre Ward and uh, Kovalev. Everyone says. Kovalev won that one, but I, I think Andre Ward won. Yeah, I thought Kovalev beat Ward in that first one, and I thought Golovkin beat Canelo definitely in that first fight, I thought, anyway. I just thought it was quite clear in terms of Golovkin was, Golovkin in that fight, really, he drowned Canelo in that fight. Canelo was, he was all awesome. he, he sat on his chest all night, didn't he? Yeah, yeah. That's he, he, did. He, he, did, he controlled the range, Carl. Like, he just, Canelo, he was fighting in spurts and Canelo tired in that fight. Um, I just thought that, yeah, he controlled it. Um, like, I, I listened to Atlas a lot and he, he said that Canelo, I mean, Golovkin won both fights, in his opinion. Uh, he thought Canelo didn't... Canelo in those in those fights, I think he I think he got... He got some nice decisions. He got some good judges that went in his favour, especially in that first fight. He didn't win. I well, well I, think, I think all four of us can agree that Teddy Atlas is somebody that knows what they're yeah, what yeah. They're talking about. He knows what he's watching. I yeah. think we'll all agree on that. And that look, Teddy Atlas, he, he calls it like he like he sees it. If he says Golovkin won that first fight, who are we to turn around and say to to question him? Because he's someone that really does know his boxing. But in my opinion, the way I score fights, I'm never giving it the Golovkin. It's just the way it is. Like Andy said, I like a specific style of boxing. 
that's the subjectivity of the sport. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which yeah. which comes into it, you know. Um, close. It was close. Yeah. But the point I was making, the point I was making is the fact that if Golovkin obviously was very skilled to go go against Canelo to have a nip and tuck fight with one of the best modern, you know, boxers in our gener in our generation right yeah. now after Floyd, right? Um, Golovkin went toe to toe with him and had a very like it was life and death really. <coughs> um, if we put someone like Froch, for example, in with Canelo, I just don't think the fight would be that competitive, to be honest with you. Uh, and in order to be competitive against someone, someone in, A plus B that always equals C, does it? No, you're right. But when you when you're going off Carl Froch in all of his fights, <clears> what, <throat> what makes you think that? What makes you what are we just going off his fights? The guys that he fought weren't as good as Golovkin. Right? But what you're saying though, um and what Andy was saying is he had trouble against slick fighters. So Canelo, in my opinion, especially when he's on the inside, you can barely touch him. But Ray, who did he fight as good as a pressure fighter as good as Golovkin? Who Froch? Yeah. Well, there's not many, Imran. There's not many around, to be fair, is there? Come on. Yep, that's that's my point. But, but the whole argument is, we're we're talking about him fighting Frodrick Super Middle, and we'll never know that, will we? We'll never know that. But th this is what you I'm don't know. You don't know how Triple yeah. G. You don't know how Triple G would operate at Super Middle. I'm just going off his skill levels. That's it. But you don't know whether that travels up to Super Middle. Does it? Does his power di diminish a little bit? Would he would he be able to keep Frodrick off? We've seen it in the past where a fighter just stepped up and, and they're not so effective. Could he take the power of a super middleweight as well? These are all questions which, which are subjective, which brings me to my answer that Frotch would be Triple G. I, I tell you what, Andy, because that's an interesting point. Could he take the power of his, um, a, a bona fide super middleweight? The fact that he was never rocked or floored at middleweight, in my opinion, would probably say, say yes. Yeah, this is this is a guy. Remember, he fought as an amateur at uh, super middleweight. You know. Yeah, but that's yeah. a different game. That's in completely there. different ball game, though, isn't it, mate? People aren't sta people aren't people aren't standing in front of him toe to toe in the same way. It's about point scoring mm -hmm. in amateur, isn't it? Yeah, true, true. But I, I still I still think if you put, for example, a super. Uh, yeah, I just I just don't think that I just don't think that. I think Golovkin had a, had a very very good chin. A very very good chin. Yeah, this is the best. Yeah. I, I mean, I go back to my point, guys. There's a reason he never stepped up. He beat everybody he could be at middleweight, and never stepped up. There's a reason for that. When Frotch offered him the contract, he couldn't find his pen. That's what happened. But Carl, one sec. What did Frotch say? What did Frotch say um, uh, when he was on a Sky Sports show? show? He said. You stay away from Gennady Golovkin. He punches like a mule. These are not my comments. Yeah, and he, he, and he, said, he said something else as well, Imran. He says that I've seen Triple G at a show and he's very, very small. No, his comment, his, this is what he said. He goes, I stood, ne he stood, he goes, it was, he said something like, I saw a picture with Gennady Golovkin and Amir Khan at the same height. <coughs> And I'm way bigger than Amir. I've, I've I've stood next to Khan, and I'm way way bigger than him. But we can't go off that. Mike Tyson was what five foot eight. If Joshua stands next to him, none of us will pick Joshua to beat Mike Tyson in his prime. That's just a that's a silly com uh, comparison. Marvin Hagler five, was five nine. Would you pick Marvin Hagler only four at middleweight? If he went to super middleweight, would you pick Frotch up to beat him? Well. He never fought. No, no, but answer that question. If Marvin Hagler fought at middleweight his whole career, if he went to super middleweight, would you pick Carl Froch to beat Marvin Hagler in Hagler's prime? It's totally different era, Imran. You, you know, where are you going to go next? Are we going to go to the 1940s? No, it's a fantasy fight, isn't it? Okay, what okay. Well, I'll answer this. I'll answer this. Yeah. Yeah. Marvin you Hagler is a million Hagler. times better than Triple G. He's better. I wouldn't say million. A million times better than Triple G. A million <laughs> times better than Triple G. I'm guessing from that this one, we'd pick Robert Hagler and beat Carl Frost. But, but, come on, they're not in the same league, are they? Come on, that's a nonsense question. What, Hagler and Frost? The thing, the thing that's the fantasy fight, though. 
Andy, in how, in what sense is is uh, in what, okay? We're talking about the, the we're talking about the the best ever. They're getting era. started on Aglo. They're getting started on Aglo. <laughs> we're talking about the best ever era in middleweights. Yeah, I, I'd agree. Yeah, he, he was, and, and, he, and, and he lost. He lost twice. Was it? Twice or three times in his career, two of them he avenged straight away, and the last, the last one, the last one was that controversial. He never fought again after it. Yeah, so, so uh, the very, very, very best. Yeah, yeah. So essentially, you're saying that he would have beaten Carl Froch, but in terms of saying that he was a million times better, I mean, he wasn't. A, he wasn't a different stratosphere to 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 uh, Golovkin. But this um, is what. Hey, so there was lot. more questions up then. One more question then. What? One more question on that then. Who would? Who would? Apart from Canelo, if you want to put him in that bracket, who's Golovkin been in against? This anywhere near the the standard of Tommy Ernst, Sugar Ray Leonard. Nobody. Nobody. No, exact, that's my exact point. Nobody. So he's a million times better than Triple G. It's a completely different era with a completely different mindset. I, I think I, I, I just don't. It'd be it'd be Triple G a million times might be a bit harsh on there, but yeah. significantly. It, it, yeah, I, I would I would agree I would agree that it was it was a lot better. It was it was a, it was a different league. I mean, yeah, those yeah. elite fighters back then were better than the, the elite fighters Animals. Back now. Animals. That's, yeah, that's just oh, fair to see. I would pick him, but I wouldn't say if Golovkin was in there with Hagler, that Hagler would just maul him and wipe him out in two, three rounds. No chance. He would. Gol mm -hmm. Golovkin would hold his own against anyone in any era. Like, he, the guy was... The, firstly, Golovkin was bigger than Hagler. Secondly, this is a guy with one of the greatest chins I've ever seen. Like, there isn't anyone with a better chin. Than, yeah, than there is. Marvin Hagler. Yeah, Marvin Hagler had a really good chin as well. I'll, I'll give you that. I was just thought of seeing that they were allowed to mention. He was also a very good pressure fighter. He would drown you just like Golovkin would. But... Do you think he would caught with a southpaw stance to Hagler? Though? Marvin Hagler would walk would have walked through Triple G. I, I, I again, I, I again, Golovkin punches very, very hard. So it's uh, it's very difficult. It's very, very difficult. Don't need Tommy Ernst. You don't do what Ernst does and not be able to bang. But Hans was Hans wasn't a middleweight. He was really a light middleweight moving up. You still see how bad. Tommy Ernst was. Yeah, he was tall. Don't get me wrong, but he was a light. He wasn't a big middleweight. He was a light middleweight, really, wasn't he? No, he could bang though. The size of him. No, no, but he started, he started right. Okay, he was really skinny, Tommy Ernst. That's why he fought at the lower weights in his younger days. Yeah. But he could bang. Look yeah. how tall he was. He was yeah, six he foot could, one. He could. He was. Hearns was. Hearns was a great fighter, no doubt about it. And Marvin. And what, had, okay, Hearns was a great fighter with a really good knockout percentage, something like 70, 80 percent. And and what did Mark? What did Marvin Agler do to him? Yeah, he stopped him. He walked through him. He destroyed him in three rounds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, I think I personally think Golovkin was a bigger, bigger guy than um, Hearns. Of course and, he was. And he could punch. He was five foot he, he could punch and, and as hard, if not harder. You don't think Golovkin can punch as hard and not harder than Hearns? No. I, I think if you're talking about the see if you if you ranked the, the great fighters even now and you, you want in the in the top twenty all time punchers, I don't think in and you know how much I rate Golovkin and I make Canelo. I don't think Ed, those two would be in the top twenty. What do you mean, like pound for pound punches? Punches, yeah, yeah, yeah. You got to remember, you got to talk about the legs that aren't um, Ernie Shavers, Archie Moore, George Foreman, um, Joe Lewis, Foreman, Oof. Tommy Hearns. You know, Tommy Hearns, Alex, Alex Arguello. I think even people like Gerald McClellan, Julian Jackson, Julian what? Jackson hit harder than harder than. Um, Julian Jackson was a massive puncher. Julian Jackson hit harder than than Golovkin. Yeah, one punch power, but it, Golovkin, it wasn't just the one punch power; it was the constant pressure. But having said that, for Hag, for me, Hagler wasn't see, just one punch. See, power, that's the, that's pressure. the thing, Imran. That's yeah. the thing you you use like haven't said, and that's the difference with back then. That's why when I talk about the older fighters, you're saying, "Oh, really, I'm going back years ago." But boxing then was pure technique. If you watch a knockout, 
Imran, like on or, or any is on on YouTube or or whatever he's watching your fights on, when people got hit those days, they didn't get up. Yep. It's not like now where the referees jumping in. You didn't get those controversies though back then because they hit you and you stayed hit. Yep. It, was, it was technique. It wasn't all this strength and conditioning and, and fancy weights and all that. These people, they hit you in the, the 15 round fighters. That's why I've always said if you would ask me to bring somebody back in boxing, it'd be 15 round fights because you would see proper clean technique and knockouts. Yeah. Boxers would fight at a natural weight. And this is why when you've got a puncher in, in that era, they are punchers, believe me. So as much as I, I, I rate Golovkin in that, I can't really put him anywhere near those fighters of, of that year because they're technically... Even somebody like uh, Joe Walcott, he was a tremendous puncher. Um, you go on for an ever in a day, but the, the fighters of those era s stood out for me. Foreman's one of my favourites. You know, when he... Some of his fights, he absolutely cleaned them out, didn't it? Yeah, yeah. It's just, you know, it's um, you know, do it unbelievable. The, the the technique is still being taught today. And he come back and did it again when he was fifty odd. Was it fifty? Yeah, he, he, was, he, was, he, was, he was. He was. He was. You know, he's 40, 46 and he cleaned up with twenty two year old. How old was the Michael Moore at the time? Twenty two, twenty three. Yeah, yeah, something like that. He cleaned them out on his feet. So, and the, the thing with Tommy Hearns is, um. When we talked about weight making, about Ken, we were, earlier on our show, we were talking about Canelo making weight. How a six, somebody who's six foot one can boil themselves down to 10 so seven and perform at that weight as long as Hearns did. Um, is, is and, he, and he had power then at that weight. He was knocking people out for fun at that weight. Yeah. Yeah. With either hand. Yeah. You know, um, yeah. I mean, Tommy Hearns, yeah, he had no chin whatsoever, but he could hit. So it was a case of he didn't let he got on the inside because he used all the advantages that he had. Tommy Hearns had did you say he had no chin? Yeah, he had no chin. I think I don't think his chin was that bad, to be honest. I think his chin was quite good. No, I don't I don't he wasn't as bad as Amir Khan's, you're right. Yeah, no, no. He didn't, he didn't do little dances. Definitely better than Amir Khan. Uh, no, it, it, it wasn't it wasn't it wasn't a good chin. I mean it, yeah, I, I would say it was a weak chin. You guys may yeah. disagree, but no, but I would say more weak chin, like Andy saying, is someone like Khan, not not her, not like not Hearns. It wasn't a great chin. No, it wasn't. A, it wasn't. I, a think, I, think Ray, I think Ray's made a good point. He's in a good area, Ray, though. Hearns had that. Hearns had that that style. Even though he got a really good knockout percentage, he used to used to use his because of how tall he was for the for the weight divisions he was fighting at. He'd use his, his skills and his reach yeah. to stay away from fighters. The only time, the, the, the only time he, he stood toe-to-toe, -to -toe, for whatever reason, was against Agler, the worst person he needed to do that with. <laughs> I think he tried to prove a point that, yeah. that he could beat anybody in any style. Well, yeah. quite well, clearly. Well, well, there's having a lot of it before the fight, wasn't there, in the press conferences? There's given uh, it to there. It's all, it's all, all bravado. Yeah, that, that's, that's probably got a lot to do with it. But but quite quite clearly, you know, that wasn't his best tactic. Mm. You know, if he'd, if he'd have boxed and moved the way he, he normally fights, that might have been a completely different fight and a completely different outcome. Mm. Mm -hmm. I, I, Andy, I think Hagler made him fight that fight. I think Hagler drowned him, basically. Hagler just... He jumped, like he just jumped on top of him, and I just, I just think he drowned. That's, that's Agler's style, mate. Isn't yeah. it? That's, yeah, what that's, he, everybody. that's what, that's what he does. So <laughs> I, I don't think, I think eventually, even if he did what you said he did, I think Hagler would eventually. He probably would have got to him in the end because yeah. that's, that's what Agler did. Yeah, yeah. That's uh, how good Agler was, mate. Yeah, he, he was a great fighter. Great, great right. fighter. Right, guys. Two hours eighteen. So we agree that Atten would have batted Khan and Froch would have batted Triple G. Thanks for the company. Just before we go, mate. Just before we go, go to answer to answer Imran's question, would um, Marvin Agler beat Carl Froch? Yeah, all day long. Is that the way you're going to end it, Ander? A lad from Northern, you know. Well, he's. I, you can't go against facts, can you, mate? I know, but you could have just not answered it. Well, yeah, but Marvin Hagler is his favourite fighter. Part of the conversation. I'm not going to leave it. Yeah, anyway, anyway you've Marvin killed Hagler's it. Marvin Hagler is his favourite fighter, though, Andy. Uh, you, 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 no more. You've killed it. All right. So, guys, 
Thank you very much for your company, Imran. Thank you for joining. Ray, thank you. And that's the AMA Corn fan club sorted. Um, and uh, cheers for coming on. Same time next week, boy, not 9 pm. Watch the channel, wait for videos to drop, some big interviews dropping this week. Take care, everybody. <laughs>